Hi everyone, welcome to our uh, Omega Dawn campaign um, of the uh, Star Frontier system. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties we've been having, but that's alright, we'll get there in the end. Uh, at the end of last session, the budget crew had finished up their mission on Alcazar uh, and had gone through a series of um, debriefs with both the Cassadine Development Corporation and the Galactic Task Force. Um, basically, uh, the crew got paid um, but um, things didn't go 100% according to plan unfortunately on the uh, during their last adventure. Um, we pick up the action uh, about a month later. Um, so you're sitting in the same bar. Oh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Go away. That was interesting. What happened there? Alright. Great. Absolutely fantastic. Now I'm having technical difficulties. Well, we have been gone for a month. Yeah, we have. All right, that's the one I wanted. So, you've been sitting in the same bar as you were yesterday and the day before and the day before that, waiting on a call from someone over at GTF to come up with a mission for you. Your hopes are not high. It's been a month since the last of the debriefs with CDC and GTF. And the impression you got from the debriefers wasn't that encouraging. You got the feeling you got paid what you did to keep your mouth shut then for doing a good job. The bar's loud music stops as vid screens flash into life around the bar. Appearing on the vid screen is a view of a stately hall with a podium at one end. An announcer says, Today, the distinguished scientist and philanthropist Dr. Jack Lagrange was awarded the Fullborn McCoy Prize for his contribution to bioengineering. After a few moments, during which the bartender asks for silence, uh, Dr. Lagrange, a middle-aged human, approaches the podium and accepts the prize from one of the officials. As is customary, he turns to face the crowd to make a speech. Thank you for the honour you have bestowed upon me. I am most grateful and pleased that my work has been recognised. I would like to take this opportunity to draw your attention to the planet of Qatar. Qatar, that should be Qatar. Um, my homeworld, where the humans are being ruthlessly exploited by the Vrusk. These creatures have been undermining human rights on Qatar. They must be stopped. This cannot be allowed to go on. For the galaxy, the picture is suddenly blanked out as an official sounding Vrusk voice makes an announcement. Due to technical failure, we are unable to continue this broadcast. We will meanwhile play you some music a Yazirian bartender switches off the trig vid at this point, muttering about the terrible decline in the quality of service recently. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah? I buy that. Time. Hey? I buy that. It was technical difficulties. Oh, <laughs> oh you would. Well, you're a Rusk. Of course. Can't yeah. There there is a there is something about being this critter. Um it is something about being um 
what's the word I'm looking for? Um, biased? That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Humans, they're always complaining. Terrible, isn't it? Fake Absolutely news. Terrible. What's fake news? The the fact that the the the, the um, Jack Lagrange got a uh, got an award. Of course. Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. So, the next day, you're sitting in the same bar as you were as yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that, still the waiting on a better. call from GTS. A human female of a prob of average height, pretty, with flaming red hair and dressed in the latest business fashion, has been eyeing you off ever she came in about 15 minutes ago. She notices you noticing her, stands, and makes her way to where you are sitting at the bar. I won't do a female voice. Is that the collective you? Yes, collective you, yes. Um, you're the budget crew, aren't you? I saw the holovids on the awards... Uh, Holovids of the award ceremony they gave you a few months back. And you are? Are you the budget crew? But and if we cheap. are? I thought We've so. We've been called that from time right. to time. Yeah. I thought so. Please, let me introduce myself. I'm Charlotte Comets. Can I buy you all a drink? She asks. Of course. Sure. Doc, Ben? Sorry, Doc, Cat? Yes. Yes, you may. You may. I'll eye her. <laughs> Money's your to spend, sweetie. Uh, she goes on. Um, listen... I know you're not doing anything at the moment, and so I ha and so I may have a job for you. I work for Pan Galactic Hollow News, and I'm closing in on a story of mon monumental proportions. Did you happen to see the awarding of the Fullburn McCoy Prize yesterday? Uh, yeah, we did. Hmm. Well, I have reason to believe that something is not quite right in terms of undue influence and or outright corruption in the awarding of the prize. I want to obtain an interview with Jack Lagrange. Following his outburst yesterday, he has refused... Sorry. He has refused uh, to speak further to the media, but he has issued a press release here. And she hands over this fax, which I've just made share to everybody. Is it really called Trojan Enterprises? It's really called Trojan Enterprises. I'm immediately suspicious. <laughs> you would be. You've got a naturally suspicious mind. Sorry, that's really Jack Lagrange. This does not bode well for the budget crew, methinks, fellows. What's your, what's your take on uh, Mr. Uh, Lagrange's perspective? I think I think he may have bribed the the awards committee. She so that he on. could get airtime. No, so he could get the prize. <laughs> it's a very it's a it's equivalent of a Nobel. So Charlotte goes on. So, as you can see, if I can get the interview, it'd be a scoop and a half. The trouble is, Lagrange has hired two big humans as bodyguards, and so I can't get to him. What I'd like you to do is accompany me as my backups while I come up with the evidence I need to expose the Fullburn McCoy Prize Committee, its trustees, and Lagrange. That's a bit of a scoop. That's a bit of scoop work on my part, and a bit and a, and a bit. I'm getting tongue-tied. Sorry, boys. And a bit of getting an interview with Lagrange, also on my part. 
which means keeping Lagrange's goons distracted while I, or even you, if you're up to it, get the interview. Even if we get his goons off of, uh, out of the room, if he doesn't want to talk, why do you think he's going to talk to you? Oh, I'm very good at getting the interviews. Lagrange is scheduled to leave for, for Qatar, it should be an, should be an, an, an R in there, in two days on the space liner morning dawn. If you decide to join me, I can pay all travel expenses to and from Qatar plus 5,000 credits to the group. I can also provide a suitable cover story for you. Do we have a deal? How many days are we talking? Well, hopefully we can get the interview on the, on the trip. So, uh, half dozen to a dozen, depending on stopovers. Um, and then a few days on Krataro if we haven't got anything, and then home. This strikes me as endless downside, boys and girls. It's yeah, a role playing minimum, game. Of course, it's den of course it's endless downside. <laughs> so, anyway. So, do uh, we have a deal? She says you looking at you expectantly. Not yet. Why don't you uh, go sh have your drink over there while we talk amongst ourselves? Okay. Okay. So she moves back to her original seat, watching you all intensely. So the first thing I would say is I wouldn't do more than like 15 days before we get on the ship back. I mean, five grand's not going to pay for months and months of tracking down this guy. We have to time bound how much we would work for her if we want to work for her. I don't think it's good for group dynamics. This gentleman is against some of the members of our own budget crew. Well, do you guys feel that Brusks exploit humans? No comment. <laughs> I mean, from from Cat's perspective, it feels like we've given we get the opportunity to uh, put a spanner in the works of a corrupt racist. So she's in. I don't know. I uh, think rocks are pretty guy... cool. Uh, this this guy seems pretty shady, so if we can uh, put a put a spanner in his works or figure out what's behind all of this, then that's that sounds like a good thing to her. I don't know if he's right or wrong about uh, the brusque organ the brusque government on uh, Kratar, but. He's a speciest. They leave a bad taste in my mandibles. I suppose even they would with some I, Yeah, even with some floss. Yes, that's where I was going as well. Beat you to it. Yes. So yeah, while it so, feels like low pay, uh, it seems like seems like a good thing to do. So you so what's the consensus amongst the four of you of the four players that are here and therefore everybody? Um, <laughs> um, that, that works. It works for me to do this job. Well, I've the got nothing I better should... to do. The doc will abstain then, because he has some worry for party unity here. Well, maybe it's a test of party unity. No, I. I see where you're coming from, Doc. Do you want to say more about it? No, because uh, everyone's already pretty much spoken their piece, and I think I'm in the minority. I just want to say that I have some concerns about this, more so than the other missions we've taken. Listen, you are perfectly entitled to voice your, voice your opinion. You're a full member of the party, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather hear what you have to say, Doc, than... Then keep it to yourself. Well, but that's no, up I... to you. But that, that's up to you, Doc. 
Yeah, it has it, it has more to do with uh, perhaps members of the party perhaps discovering information that they hadn't known or perhaps they had known but didn't want to know and being on a planet where these issues are at the forefront is not good for for party unity that's that's all i'm going to say perhaps right. nothing happens out of it and and we can have a short trip and make a small 5000 k a 5k benefit to us all but uh, i'm i'm leery well it's not paying that much Well, it's five k to the entire group, not to each of us, I believe, right? Yeah, that's my concern, right there. Is it... Well, if if you're if you're worried enough, Doc, I'll 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 say we don't have to go. We don't have to accept her offer. But if we do accept her offer, then like I I was saying, I think we need to give her so many days. If it's if it's seven to ten days to get there then we give her maybe five days on planet and then we leave or she pays us more or she buys us the tickets beforehand yes we buy the tickets before she buys us the tickets and gives us round trip fare before and then five days on planet i just have the feeling i'm going to be knee deep in blood once again Again, it's a role-playing game. What do you expect otherwise? <laughs> Profit. <laughs> Profit! Oh, dear. So, um, so you're going to call... So, uh, one has the... Hang on. Gentlemen, let me put, draw your attention to the chat box. If um, click uh, twice I'm, if you don't. Doc, I'm I'm willing to say no if you uh, are are that concern concerned. If it's minor and you and you can deal with it, but if you want me to, we'll say no. You got to tell me how strong you feel about this. Just can I just pause things for a second there? Can I, Doc? Can I have you over in the private room, please? User left yes, your channel. Yes, sir. User left your channel. Are you guys worried for party unity? Not really. Got nothing else to do. Well, I think the concern is, you know, if if the Vrusk government is exploiting the others, I don't think myself as a Vrusk, you know, I, I've got a different perspective than maybe humans, but exploitation's exploitation. It doesn't matter who's doing it to who. Cat thoughts. Also, make sure we stay anonymous in this. Yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. No. Well, I mean, I'd rather not this, cause we don't even know if she. Well, we should maybe try to figure out who she is. She's a reporter for Pangalactic Hollow News. That's what she said. Yeah, we should verify that that's true. Yeah, Pangalactic Hollow and see how trustworthy of a reporter she is. Cause User joined your channel. You know, User rather joined not your channel. be pulled uh, okay. into a fake news story. Yeah, fake news, exactly. So Matt, do we know do we know this news reporter? 
Have we seen her on air? Um, possibly. There's quite a few Hollow News channels, some of them local to... to most of them local to only one system. Um... Well, she's not um, paying us much, and and perhaps we might want to take a look into who she is and where she's from, and perhaps she's is she trustworthy? Iron in this fire, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it might be an idea. I mean, you're in a, you're in a, you're in one of the capital, you know, one of the high tech cities, so there's there's plenty of data terminals around, uh, yeah, just so for general information. If you want to go digging for stuff, obviously that'll be computer roles. Yeah, at least get some general information, and I'll dig deeper as I can. I'll do computer roles, and Kat can as well. She's going to be better at it than me. If she's clean, then I will reluctantly go with the party's decision. All right. Do you want so? so what do you want to say to? What do you want to say to Charlotte? Charletta. Charletta. What do you want to tell her? Because she's looking over at you as you're having this discussion. Now, obviously out of earshot, but she's waiting for, to hear what your decision is going to be. How long is it going to take us to see if her if she's legitimate? It depends on how deep you want to go. Um, if if she's completely legit and says what she and says what she's what what she's is, is truthful in what she's saying um, that about wor working for the for the for Pan Galactic Hollow News. Then it shouldn't be too hard to, 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 to come up with some with a with a Wikipedia type entry. Honor, but so I mean, if you want to get if you want to get get deep 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 records and, and things like that, then you're going to have to hack something. Yeah, I don't think hacking anything, but just um, it does she is she really a reporter for Pan Galactic Hollow News, and is she known to have a specific bias? That's what I'd like to know. All right. Well, the, the public computer terminals are pretty easy to operate, um, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. Just a quick information search, but I need to know what term or terms you are searching for, please. I would search for her name and uh, just to, and Pan Galactic Hollow News. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that sounds about right. That display well, info? This is display info, yeah. Okay, that's what you get about Pan Galactic on the on the just on the public terminals. Okay, but that's nothing about her, right? Nothing about her yet, no. Um if you give me another gather information role. Display info, I think. They're display info, yes, sorry. Display info. Um, 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 Charlotte. Damn it, I forgot your name. It's on the wrong page, that's why. <laughs> Charletta. Yeah, Charletta. Um, I, had it, I had it a minute ago. What did I do with it? Whatever her last name is. So, yeah. Charletta, uh, yeah, is is an accredited journalist um, throughout the frontier, and apparently does work for for uh, Hollow Hollow Net, for Pangalactic Hollow Net, Hollow News, I should say. Um, her, uh, you managed to pull up a a, a, a publicity shot, uh, and it, yeah, it looks like the Charlotte you're talk you've been talking to. She's known as a bit of a muckraker. Uh, as well, uh, what does that mean? Um, muckrakers are those individual uh, investigative journalists is the is the correct term. Okay, find things. That Muck rake, don't muckraker, muckraker is what most people call them. Yeah, so I I think when we call her back over, we just ask for her ID, we validate that as we can, and then I say we accept it and we give her five days on planet. Round trip ticket purchased in advance, five days on planet. Okay, she agrees to that. Um, she, she, she doesn't think it should, she, she doesn't think it should take more than five days anyway. Um, so the cover story and the papers that Charlotte provides is that you are recently hired employees of the Sikhtiriska 
That's the Rusk Trade House specialising in transport on Karata. Hang on a sec, guys. So while there's a lull, just forewarning, the trick-or-treaters are due here in under an hour. Ah. <laughs> Bastards don't know what Halloween is. Oh, so you guys, they come around early, huh? I'm the only one that they're coming to, so. <laughs> I have to put on my costume and then take pictures and... And Paul, you're good with us going ahead with this? Not not Doc, but you, Paul? Yeah, of course. Okay. The Doc smells something fishy. He's just kind of... Yeah, I think there's skeptical. definitely... Yeah, I think there's definitely fish, dead fish here, but I think Sorry, we're okay guys. as a party. Um, so that, so that's, the, that's the... Uh, that's what... Um, um, yeah, that's, that's the cover story. And uh, as she gets up to leave, uh, Charlotte says, Excellent. See you at the spaceport in two days. Okay. So, what do you guys want to do, if anything? So, let's research her, research the um, trade house, um, and research... Trojan Enterprises and Jack LaGrange and sure, give me a sec. the committee as well. Uh -huh. Where is my... There it is. Okay, so... If you want search terms, I can type them up. No, I've, I, no, I've got a, I've got a, don't, I've got a tool here. I need, I just need to find, which I've now found. Um, User joined your channel. Who was that? Hello, this is Thomas. It's Thomas. How are you, Thomas? Jazz. Uh, jazz yeah, is in stasis. Jazz is in stasis. Oh, surprise, surprise. <sighs> uh, where are you, Jazz? I can't even find you. There you go. Yeah, clear, character clear. Um, the guys have just been set up for set up for a, a massive failure. Um, no, it's not quite true. Set up is an accurate term, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna, I'm going to give you these. Um, you for your sake, uh, Jazz. I'm just going to give you the, the the stuff that I gave the the other guys. Okay. Ready? It's going to come right. to the chat box. It'll come through in a, in a large mess. You can read it as your leisure, but if you've got it in the chat box, you'll have a copy of it. You know what I mean? Okay. In short, we're hired to be backup bodyguards to an investigative journalist. We gave her five days on planet. She's paying round trip fare, giving us 5,000 credits, and um, basically to get her an interview with this person. So we're backup bodyguards for a journalist who's going on a trip. Well, yeah. to, she's going to interview somebody who doesn't want to be interviewed. So who may or may not have taken, have bribed a committee to get a award and then use the airtime, uh, use the, uh, the hollow vid time, uh, oh. to single out, uh, some Rust Corporation supposedly, uh, what was it? What was uh, by the, the way, word? By the way, sorry, I've got Charlie also. Charlotte also gives you this when you agree to go with her. Uh, you can magnify that out if you want, guys. You might need to.
So maybe that, that, may, that should help too, I believe, for information. Oscar exploiting other aliens for profit. Yeah, specifically humans. Is what that guy claimed. Though this journalist said that he bribed the committee, so we're going for that. He's been very vague about the about what his outburst was, though. You know, hasn't really addressed that issue. Well, we got two days to do our background research, and we should get some. Everybody should make sure they have non-lethal weapons, because we shouldn't be going in to kill bodyguards. We should be going in to remove them or stabs them in the eye. Well, that's the doc's job. Oh, and Jazz, on your character sheet, I put a note of what we got paid minus 2000 in taxes and living expenses. You still made a lot of money. Yeah. There's a story called uh, Pay Rates that has everybody's. And, of course, you can expend XP and you can buy what you want. Ironically, Jazz needs more strength with working there to buy more stuff. Well, that's why I'm buying robots. I was on pause. That was why you could not hear me. Um, so you guys said you were going to um, uh, uh, hit the data terms, data terminals. Yes. Well, right. at least, yeah. I'm, Kat can do it better than me, but I'll back her up and do what I can. All right. All right. So what, what, what's the first term you'd like to look for? Jack Lagrange. Jack LaGrange. Jack LaGrange. The computer has this to say about Jack LaGrange. And then um, Trojan Enterprises. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's some good food, Matt. Yeah, sorry, Mike. All good. A fresh cinnamon bun smothered in butter, along with a so cup of coffee. Can we get more information on Trojan Enterprises philanthropies? What their failing um, philanthropic work is? You can try. You want me to make a roll? Yes, please. What is that, display info? 
Yeah, they're just playing power off at the moment. Yeah, okay. That's what you come back. Okay. What about the with Jack and um, more about his views on brusques? Again, you can give me. A, you can try a display info role. One, both, one or both of you. Yeah. No. Yeah, you got no hope. No, sorry, mate. Not with that one. Uh, and then no. the. Oh, go ahead. Not, not, not at the moment. I mean, if, I mean, hypothetically, and I mean completely hypothetically, if you were to travel to the headquarters of Trojan Enterprises in the Timon system and hack their computers, you might be, you might have another chance. But there's right. nothing in the public data nets. Right. So now, what about uh, what he's been doing in what bioengineering he does? So bioengineering Jack Lagrange, bioengineering Trojan Enterprises. Yeah, basically the information he pretty much got already. Um, okay. uh, plus some plus some extra, yeah. Uh, Trojan Enterprises um, is doing a lot of research around bioengineering. That's what the McCoy Prize was yesterday for. Um, they are the leading company in terms of of, of bio regeneration and 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 replacement limbs. Um, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, I don't know so what else got, I can tell you. Okay, That's on the so public his, yeah. So his, his work with regenerative limbs. Okay. Um, what about um, the trading company, the Rusk Trading Company? Which one was that? You gave us the name, the cover story. Six, yeah, the one six, 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 oh, trick good. star. Trick star. Uh, trick star, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, where is that? That's... Um... I need a non-lethal weapon. Non-lethal weapon. Yeah, look right. those up. Okay, uh, look those up. Um, that is uh, what you get. Sorry. <laughs> That's a preliminary search of what you get. And then I don't know if I had heard anything about that trade house with my background growing up, Russ. Uh, uh, um, probably not. Caritas, uh, uh, pretty well to the east. It's actually to the east of White Light, Galactic uh, East okay. uh, of White Light. Um, and I don't think you've done much done much out there. Um, I grew up on Cack and Car. Yeah, it's it's not near. It, it, it's nearby. The fact that you haven't heard of uh, sick trick, sick trick star um, st is probably because they're a local system house as opposed to a frontier wide house. Um, okay. It's not certainly not one you recognise from your home world anyway. And then I don't know about anybody else. The next term I would like to search would be more along the lines of um, racial unrest on crack in, on the planet. <laughs> Qatar, yeah, Qatar. Qatar. All right, uh, well, um, this one's a bit big to put through the system, so I've just emailed, you, I've just emailed a, a, a PDF file for everybody. Um, it's just going, 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 gone. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, yeah, so um, that's what happens when you look for uh, the Qatar, um, and uh, there's quite a bit of info in that in that um, in that info file. Um, so keep an eye on your emails; it'll be coming through very very quickly. Um, in the meantime, that's not what I want. In the meantime, let me. Uh, read it to you. Uh, so this is a background report on Trickstar. Um, it's a G7, sorry, it's a G4 yellow star. It has four uh, planets. Uh, Denzart, which is uninhabited and scorched, very close to the centre of the system. Uh, uh, 
Karakar itself, which I spelt wrong, uh, which is the inhabited alien system, uh, the Chidkai belt, which is the asteroid belt, and Tridar, which is a gas giant with many moons. The only habitable planet is uh, Karatar. Uh, Karatar has two moons, the closest one being Trivula and the second one being Cetraz. Um, the climate range atmosphere is, is thin. Um, it's got a gravity of 0.6. Uh, it's got a, a, a diameter of 9.8 uh, 9 thousand kilometres, actually kilometres, a uh, thousand kilometres. Uh, the length of the year is 272 local days. Colonisers. Uh, no, that shouldn't be there at all. That's a mistake. Ignore that. That's what I did. Get for copying and pasting. <laughs> Sorry, boys. General information. Karatar is a small, mountainous world first settled by human colonists from white light 200 years ago. The planet lies in a close orbit to the star Trick Star and has a thin atmosphere. Water covers only 20% of the planet and there is very little cloud cover. Being near the inner edge of the system's life zone, Karatar receives large amounts of stellar radiation and temperatures at the equator range from 0 to 60 degrees Celsius. As a result, deserts occupy most of the equatorial zone of the planet. The majority of Karatar is covered by high altitude deserts and jagged mountain ranges, rising to heights of 10,000 metres. The atmosphere in the mountains is too thin to breathe without the aid of breathing apparatus, but numerous flatlands exist around the planet, many of which are below sea level. These areas are very fertile, and more importantly, the atmosphere here is sufficiently dense to allow the four races of the frontier to breathe without assistance. However, the air is not as dense as most people are used to, and visitors often become puffed when doing any strenuous activity. Natives of Karatar are not subject to these effects, but they cannot function in the mountains without breathing apparatus. Have those emails come in yet? Yep. Yep. Or more than one? Or just the background? No, just, just the one. Okay, just the one PDF. Uh, email to each of you, I meant. Um, would you like me to continue reading, or would you like to read it yourself, gentlemen? I'm good reading it myself. All right, so there you go. I'll leave that to you then. Sounds a lot like uh, the first Asian companies to come to parts of the U.S. <laughs>
just realised, didn't hear what I said. Yeah, it does sound a little bit like like that situation, doesn't it? Yeah. The other thing uh, while I read this that I wanted to search was more on the uh, McCoy Prize and the committee and um, any um, rumors yep, of... Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll give you all that when you finish reading all that. Okay. This is, this is a, by the way, this is an information-dense adventure, if you haven't gathered. <laughs> <laughs> no, just walking into that alien village and shooting everybody or dropping a few hand grenades. A few? We're not amateurs. We drop a lot. Two dozen. Touche. Yeah, we'll also want to know about the KLC and yeah. Lagrange's. I'm done when others are. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm done. Uh, I'm still going. That's because you. That's because you don't skim. Alright, Everybody read? Yep. So what other terms did you want? Uh, the McCoy Foundation. Ah, uh, yeah, the uh, few, um, Uh, Fulburn and McCoy were a pair of um, scientists, uh, one human, one dralocyte, um, about 100 years ago who um, set up a, um, um, a prize foundation for uh, bioengineering, biology and things you know, of, that, of that nature. Um, the Fulburn-McCoy the, the Fulburn prize is like a modern day Nobel or the Pl the Ma the Planck award they give for mathematics that type of that type of award it's pretty prestigious um, obviously Mc obviously McCoy and Fulburn both died several decades ago um, and the foundation board set up a, um, um, a, a, tr a trustee board basically known as the committee um, there are maybe half a dozen to a dozen uh, members of the committee. Um, it tends to float over time. They're all eminent scientists. Um, occasionally you'll get a, um, uh, a, um, a businessman or someone like that on the board, but the majority of the board are eminent scientists in their own, in, in, in the field of, of, of bioengineering and things like that. Um, there is no public uh, room or anything else like that, apart from Charlotte, Charletta, sorry, um, that anything was anything that sh anything un 
anything that happened shouldn't have happened. In other words, there's no Charlotte's the only one who thinks there's bribery that you can find. Charlotte thinks there's the only one who's done undue influence on the board to, to award the prize to LaRange. Um, it, there doesn't seem to be much to it except for the, the, news, the news hound's hunch. Um, there's certainly nothing you guys can find. What about the KLC? Uh, KLC, KLC. What do we know about the KLC? That's what you uh, find about the KLC. And you can give me another roll, please. It's pretty easy to get this stuff. This is all public information, so it's it's, it's Wikipedia level stuff. You know, not or maybe not even that in some cases. Um, you know, so. Anything, any other terms anyone wants to look, search for? Not me. I have absolutely nope. no capabilities with computer. Well, yeah, but from the yeah, information, well, is there anything you want to know more about or any links yeah. that you see that tie between the information? When I say when I say anyone, any more terms anyone wants to search about, I'm assuming you guys are standing over the shoulders of the two computer experts. Um, the other one I'd like to know more about is the RAL, the RIK, RIK trade house, the security trade house. Raul. Okay, again, okay, uh, yep. Um, that's the information that comes up. Okay, yeah, so something? just for... Yeah, it's the same as before. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what about any information on what the local laws are for weapons, self-defense, etc.? Okay, can you give me... Uh, on, uh, you, you need to give me roles for these, but yeah, go ahead. All right, military-grade heavy weapons are banned. Um, personal sidearms in terms of pistols are, are, are perfectly allowed. Um, and while there is no explicit law against rifles, some customs officers consider rifles military-grade as well. So leave the rifles at home. No, bring no. them, but don't carry them. Okay. Bring them, but don't, bring them, but, yeah, bring them, but, but don't carry them. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. But if you're going to start lugging, lugging machine guns or heavy lasers or rocket launchers, or I don't think they're going to get through customs. What about the recoilless rifle? I don't think it's going to get through customs. Oh. It's classed as a heavy weapon. Anything about um, robots? Uh, no, nothing about robot. Nothing about robots. But you know, you know yourself that um, that uh, combat robots are considered co are considered military grade equipment. So based on previous data. Sorry, you broke up there. I said sorry. I said uh, you know from a ro being a robotics expert that um, combat robot robots are considered military grade. So if they're not going to let military-grade weapons through, then the, the logical thinking on that is they're not going to let um, a combat robot through. Or so there's robot a through. question. I was going to build a custom robot. Would that be immediately known to be a combat robot if it's functional? Are you going to arm it? Functional? Are you going to arm it? Well, not built-in weapon systems. It would be armed with rifles or... Maybe, but I don't it carries know that heat, like the four species carry. Yeah, it, it, it's look whether whether it gets banned outright or it gets picked up in customs. I don't know, but I mean, you guys have been through enough customs checkpoints now in your careers to know that um, they do a pretty pretty 
thorough sweep of a robot's internal programming. Um, so the search and destroy and the attack and defend programs would probably show up, therefore making it a combat robot, therefore making it, if they're going to ban it, ban, bannable. Okay. The other side of that now, if, if something like that were to not be allowed through customs, would, would we be able to secure them with customs so that we don't have to sh ship them back, per se? Oh, they'd, they'd probably confiscate it and give it back to you. They'd probably give it back to you at the end of the... when you leave. When we leave. Okay, that's fine. That's what I, that's what I meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's... Uh, but, I mean, you can hold... Uh, between you and me, you can hold off on this robot for a while if you want. I mean, you don't have to do it right now. You can do it later. Yeah, I'll do it before next session, but, yeah. You yeah, know, I meant when you come back from Qatar. <laughs> oh, okay. But that's up to you. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Costume is on baby? Oh, it's Halloween out there, isn't it? Well, it's the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, we bought full-size candy bars because we get like four kids. <laughs> we bought, th we got, we went to Costco, bought a thirty pack. Yeah. So the been, four eight, kids eight, get eight, four eight, of them, yeah. and the rest are yeah, ours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so um, any other terms you guys would like to search for here in the, yeah, you know, before you leave for the starship. Oh, uh, is grenades allowed? Uh, no, military grade. Tangler grenade? Possibly. Depends on the, it'd probably depend on the, um, customer, customer's officer. Okay, I will leave and my those? grenades at home. No, those aren't considered, those are considered non-lethal. Non-lethal weapon. And smoke? Okay. As well? And smoke. Smoke as well. Okay, then I'll take my smoke and those grenades. Yeah, I'll take Tangler grenades, but we'll see if they get confiscated or not. All right. Um, and I do want to pick up a non-lethal weapon, Matt. I just haven't had a chance to look at the look at what's available. I got a Sonic stun. By all means, do, we do it right do, now. What do we do with the big cache of stuff? The cache uh, of big. We're gonna sell it. We have not. That that'll be a while to sort through. That that. So you've got it in the storage shed. Like we we need to sell the subspace radio. Uh, we've got. You see what said? Yep. We've got credits you, in you there. We've got a tier two computer. We've got para batteries, and those sell for a lot. What uh, non-lethal weapons are are there besides stun stick and sonic stunner? Not much. We've got all of the well in the cache. We've got all of the different types of grenades. You do indeed. Don't forget. Don't forget, though, that Qatar's a Qatar's a civil. It's a civilized world. There's no reason why you couldn't buy stuff that you need there. Heavy duty military stuff. You might have a bit of trouble with. Right. I and guess I'm sure, Bab I'm sure Babu is very good at connecting up with the local black market too, for that matter. Uh, Vote, yeah, did you is. find anything besides those two that stun? That are considered non lethal? Uh, that was all I went for. Um, let's see, stun. Hmm. Yeah, there's the needle pistol. Uh, oh, the needle has... pistol. Stun yeah. rounds. The sleep rounds. They do 1d10, but their main thing is sleep. Yeah, they got Doze mines. You could get some doze mines, you know. Yeah, That's no, probably... I don't really think so. <laughs> yeah, the Sonic Stunner is the only one that does stun. Uh, this is the Electro Stunner. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, the Electro Stunner, what's that? No, that does damage, damage. It's uh, toggle. Toggle a toggle. You can you can switch it back and forth. You can toggle it. Ah, I see. see. It's got that letter next to it. I can't read on this 
yellow text on Let's white see background. The a. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I've got to get things fixed up. Stop hassling. Yeah, all all cat's taking is her needle pistol with sleep rounds and a sonic s and a stun stick. That seems pretty okay for this kind of mission. Well, I mean, yeah. I would take lethal pistols. I mean, I'll take my rifle and stuff, but I'm also going to get them the that way if we end up having to do something, we have the weapons. But I'm not going to carry it around town. So I guess I'll probably do the Electro Stunner then, since you guys are doing other things, so we have a variety. The major thing, because Jack, <clears throat> excuse me, it's Jack a small A, by the way. The electro so stunner. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a small A, um, is what that little letter is, mate. Oh, the Electro Stunner is very short range. Very yeah, short range. So that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Jazz carries that around, but... Yeah, it's a very short-range weapon. I don't know. I'll buy something when we have to figure it out. Well, you have to figure it out now. <laughs> okay, so so then who's, unless, who's unless you guys want to do something, I'm going to move move on to the morning of the departure. So who has what? We've got a needler pistol. We have a sonic stunner. We have an electro stunner. Anybody the else? Doc have? isn't using anything. Uh, Babu's uh, got his nightstick. Yeah. And his full set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Dad, yep, you're the last one. There's a stun stick in the cache of Big Booms as well. Big Booms, too. Um, I guess I'll take a Sonic Stunner. Yeah, I'll take a Sonic Stunner. Okay. It's going to be nice not having to worry about range increments. Oh. Mm. Perf. Well, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Don't you dare. I just spent like 11 grand on this, okay? Don't you dare screw up my body. Oh, I'm going to screw it up while I'm through it. That's what GMs are for, aren't they? All right, listen. So you're not going to censor any more. You're not going to censor any more terms. That's to computer terms. That's fine. Is that right? Believe so. nothing I can think of. All right. Or... So uh, next morning, early, you you find yourselves out at the local spaceport and um, are going through custom checks um, for. Um, the uh, ship, which is known as the Morning Dawn, it's one of the uh, sister ships of the Golden Dawn. So, if you need a map, you can use the Golden Dawn map. Um, so, you make it through customs, and there's a gentleman, there's a driller site actually waiting at the bottom of the, uh, the 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 ramp to the shuttle you guys are going to be taking. Um, he greets you, um, uh, checks your Tickets for um, Trickster. Um, Is that the Starliner station? Bridge deck? Map? Uh, that's one of them. Okay. There are three of those maps, but they're all that's the one. Yeah, there. so it's the Starliner, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, Charlotte has, has joined you. Joined you. Uh, at, at joined you at customs and and hands over um, six. Was it seven? Six? Seven? Six. Six return tickets, as per your agreement. Um, the uh, steward, the little Drala site, as he identifies himself, um, does a quick check of your bags um, and uh, temporarily confiscates all weapons and grenades uh, and puts them in, uh, labels them carefully and puts them in a bin. Yeah, puts them in a bin. Um, a storage bin um, and uh, while this is all happening because you're carrying a lot of weapons apparently um, Jack Lagrange uh, shows up with two well you think they're humans they could be gorillas you're not quite sure um, but they're certainly goons goons hired goons <laughs> um, so yeah um, 
and w waits patience waits patiently in line behind behind you. Um, you all move into the shuttle. Uh, Lagrange sits with two bodyguards either side of him, uh, so no one can get close. Uh, and Charlotte doesn't even try. Um, in addition to Lagrange, his two bodyguards, uh, yourselves and Charlotte, uh, two Rusk um, <laughs> businessmen. They look like businessmen. They act like businessmen. They they they're talking um, sales and they're carrying briefcases. So which the steward checks over, I might add. Um, and they also get on. So that looks like the crew and the shuttles up to the up to the morning dawn. Um, you are obviously allowed to keep your toolkits uh, for those of you who are carrying toolkits um, and whatever else you have stowed in the hole, uh, whatever else you wanted to take with you has been stowed in the hole of the shuttle. So um, you haven't completely disarmed me as long as I have my laser welder. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, it's uh, 20, 30 minutes later, the shuttle takes off. Um, G forces pushes you push you back into your seats, um, and a couple uh, and an hour or so after that, you make dock with the um, morning dawn. Um, the steward says as you're making dock, um, all your all your non carry on luggage will be will be um, will be uh, stored in the hold um, unless there's something you particularly want um, in your in your rooms. If so, just please let me know uh, as you disembark. Um, you dock at the top docking bay, docking ring of the ship, um, um, but you've only got second class second second class tickets. Um, Lorange and his two bodyguards peel off into the first class area, and um, one of the uh, crewmen show you down to the second class areas and show you to your cabins. Now I don't have any particular bother which cabin you guys take. Um, but Is this the lower to, deck? Yeah, no, not the bottom deck. It's the middle deck. The bridge deck. Bridge. Um, it's uh, and and it's over to the it's over to the second class is over to the right, over to the left. Left. So scan the scan the map to the right. So if you guys want to pick a cabin, um, for argument's sake, we'll call them. We'll go down each column, so and starting at the left hand top left is one, then two, then three, then across the aisle to four, and so on. Um, it's up to you guys which cabins you want to take, I don't mind. Well, we need six beds, so we can take the bottom half, the top half, the right half, the left half. And the half half. D it. You know what? We're, how about we take the top right half and with the bottom left half? How about that? Or we just take oh, that's the just, bottom. That's just confusing. I know. That's why. Or we could just take the bottom cabin. Yeah, that okay. way we're what? mutually supportive. Let's take the bottom six. Okay. Well, just note somebody note down somewhere which who's in which cabin, please. Is somebody making a note, or should I make a note? I tried dragging a token on, but that didn't. You got to do go from the combat tracker, and Matt's got to do it. I don't know if it's worth putting them on the combat tracker, Matt, and dropping them on the map, or should I just make a no, note? No, probably not. Just make a note. I think you're fine. Okay, I'm, you're, not gonna I'm start any, you're not going to start. You're not going to start any trouble, are you? Nah. Probably not. until the Star Devil shows up. Would I do that to you? Yeah, you would. You said last time, you said last time until the Sapphire show up, and the Sapphire never showed. So I'm making a note, guys, called Cabins. I'm just assigning people, by the way, you show up in the chat order. If you want a different cabin, let me know. So you're taking cabins four, five, and six, and nine, ten, uh, ten, ten, eleven, and twelve. Is that right? Uh, yeah, the bottom six. Ah, uh, that's four, five, and six. Yeah, it's four, five, and six, and and um, ten, eleven, and twelve. 
four, five, mm -hmm. is it left to right, right to left, up? No, it's four, five, six, down. It, 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 Columns. It, I said we go down each column. From left to right or column. right to left? From, from left to right. Okay. Um, the two, the two Vrusk Bris, the two Vrusk business guys, take cabins, uh, uh, eight and nine, and the other four cabins appear to be empty for this trip. And what cabins oh, did you say were in? Hey? The businessmen were in which cabins? Eight and nine. Eight and nine, and Charlotte's in three. Or oh, Charletta is in three. Okay. So I'm just looking something up. Yep, that's what I thought it was. Good. Got it. Pardon me. So, um, after you've st after you've you you uh, you stowed your things and the ship is, you feel the ship underway because you've got gravity basically. Um, uh, Charlotte meets you. Uh, knocks on one of your doors and said, I think we should go to the lounge, which is back upstairs one, Matt. Yeah. Wherever she wants us. Well, she says, she says to you that she thinks you guys uh, should make the first approach. I've already tried and the bodyguards won't let me near him. So maybe, maybe when he comes out engage him in some cards or something and just get him talking um, I know it'll be off the record but it, it's a start so I uh, let me not associate with the rest of you guys if he thinks I'm associated with you guys he's not going to talk to you well when you make it back up to the when you make it up to the lounge the two Vrus businessmen are already seated uh, um, over um, uh, in, in one of the, yeah, and having a drink. Um, I'll go talk to them. All right. So can I put that on hold for a second? Yep, absolutely. Excellent. Um, so what, what are the other, what are the, what are the rest of you doing? Eyeing him nervously. Eyeing who nervously? The award he won. The target, yeah. Well, the target, the target's not in the lounge at the moment. Neither are the bodyguards. Body no, neither are the bodyguards. Go start a game of poker or something. Maybe he'll join you if he shows up. Yeah, we'll take one of the big tables. Mm hmm. All right. So you guys are playing cards or drinking or chatting or admiring the view out the. Um, out the the porthole, uh, not portholes, out the out, out the windows. Um, there's a little bit of a blue red shift in the stars. You're only doing one G, so it's not that it's not that pronounced, but it is spectacular. Um, you in the distance, in the far far distance, a little more than a speck, you can see another couple of ships. You know, um, one of them a warship. Um, uh, yeah, flying around, doing what they're doing, going where they're going. Um, so when you walk up to these two brass businessmen, what do you uh, what do you uh, what do you say to them? What do you do? Um, hello, gentlemen. Mind if I uh, join you for some conversation for a little bit? No, of course not, Miss. Uh, we'd be we'd be most most welcome to to have you. Says uh, says the older of the two. Um, they are brass males. Um, you're a brass female. Just reminding you. Um, yep. They come across as 
the equivalent of modern day late 40s early 50s um okay uh businessman so yeah so what, yeah so you know if i go on, go on. i was gonna say you know my goal is to just get them talking and tell you know uh be, be amused by whatever it is they have to say and be interested in what they're saying um if they talk ask me what i am you know oh i'm a technician i used to you know i was raised on cracking car and and looking to see um you know traveling to uh Qatar. I see. Um, well, they give their names. I can't pronounce either of their names. So I'm not even going to try. Um, but they they they, uh, they get your name off you, obviously. Um, they try and be middle-aged men, witty, with the, the young, the young uh, traveling companion, shall we say? You know, um, the younger of the two probably thinks he's got a chance. I don't know whether he has got a chance, but he thinks he has. Um, but uh, they, uh, they you, you spend a, a, a couple of pleasant hours and basically um, if you can give me an intuition and a logic role please and there's intuition and here's logic mm-hmm And I don't know okay. if I comprehension as well. Oh There's yeah, anything please. complex. Add, add your, add your, comp add your comp comprehension, please. I forgot about that. Oh, you want me to add that to those roles? So that would be fifteen. No, t I mean take it off as in you make it better because it's yeah you know, we've got to, it's got to go down. Right. So that would be minus six and minus sixty seventy one. Yeah. All right. Well, between your intuition and your and your uh, uh, logic, you manage to piece together, just talking to these guys, that they're two executives. Uh, they're executives of um, the Click Acut Trading House on Qatar. They're returning home after a, a seven world um, trade talk tour um, uh, for, for, their, for their trade house. Oh, that's the glass house, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Is yeah, it in the background I, report if it is. Yeah, so the CA house. Yeah, so, yeah. CA. I I'm I'm very interested in that because I wanted to buy some glass while we're there. So. Ah, uh, we have the finest glass in the on, on the on the planet, and some say in the frontier. Yeah. I'm well aware. I'm quite interested. Quite mm. interested. Our um our our main our main showroom uh the our main offices in. Uh, Gorsk City um, would, be, would be able to help you out. No ma no problem at all. Nothing we can do here. We don't have anything but a, f but a few odd samples. Um, and they're back in my, our room. You don't want to come and have a look at them, do you? Says the younger one. Uh, not at this time, but I was maybe what I was hoping is when, we, when I get there that I could uh, call, call you up and maybe you could show me the finer points of the glass. By That's all in... means, Miss Cerise, that would be more than my pleasure. Did you get so to come get... up and see my? Did you get to come up and see my etching reference? Yes, I saw that. <laughs> oh dear. sorry guys. Um, so um, Cerise sits there and talks to these two Velasques. Um, it finds out a bit of information, basically pretty much what you've already given, been given in that background report that I gave you. Um, the the Vrusks, the, these two Vrusks themselves, one, they can't really understand the, the human's desire to move around all the time. I mean, the trade house is everything, right? So that's the cultural thing that you are aware of, right? Um, but they also say it, it's, it's not very bad. It has nothing, nothing, you know, it's, 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 it's the humans work for, the humans and the Vrusks work side by side. Everybody's got medical attention paid for. Everyone's got housing. Yeah, um, we don't, we can't understand what's what these, what what these humans are like. Yeah, and it's only a very very small, uh, very very small percentage, they say. And this is the information you gather over a couple of hours of talking. Right. Okay. In the meantime, Lorraine and his bodyguards have not come out of their cabin. So. 
So, the day passes quite pleasantly, playing cards or talking or whatever it happens to be. Uh, dinner is uh, dinner is served uh, to everybody in the dining room. Um, everyone spends a couple of hours more as as night in inverted commas falls, um, and then I suppose you make your way back to your cabins. The range hasn't poked his head out of his cabin all day. However, you did see one of the stewards um, carrying, uh, pushing a tray, uh, pushing a cart, a grav cart labelled uh, with three trays of food on it. So maybe Lagrange and his bodyguards are eating in their cabin tonight. So is there anything anyone wants to do? No, I'm. If the group wants to talk tonight, we can talk in private somewhere. Does the group want to talk tonight? Uh, no, it's okay. More gambling, I reckon. More gambling. Hmm. Just hanging out. Hanging out. Well, next morning, you, uh, when you arrive uh, for breakfast. Uh, and it, by the way, if I move too fast and people want to hold me up to something, just jump in at any time, any any point. Um, Lagrange and his two bodyguards are sitting at a table um, away from the two Vrusk executives who are also there. Um, there's no room at Lagrange's table for anyone else. Um, it probably would have sat four, but. Um, there's only three seats and they're all occupied and Gra Lagrange is obviously the furthest one from everyone else. Um, Charlotte joins you not long afterwards. Charlotte joins you not long afterwards. Um, are you still avoiding the others, Cerise? Yes, and I, I join the other Vrusks. Okay. And come in at a different time and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I get spot checks off everybody, please? Um... Half intuition, half logic. All right, Cerise, you notice a very dirty look from Lagrange as you cross the floor to the other two brusque. Cat, you saw you spot that as well. That other one's Babu. And Babu obviously does not. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, you know, if looks if looks could kill, you'd have fried cerise on for, for breakfast. If you know what I mean. I'm gonna spot check off your vote real quick. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't spot anything. <laughs> um. Breakfast is pleasant. Um, Charlotte um, uh, seats, sits herself down with you and um, chats pleasantly, as a fellow passenger probably would. But during the conversation, she leans towards the closest of you and whispers, I think today's the day. Now that he's out of his cabin. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Continue with breakfast. Breakfast is cleared up and, and taken away by the stewards. Uh, and Lagrange and his bodyguards head towards the lounge area, a secluded corner of the lounge area. What is everybody else do? And uh, what does everybody else do? I stay with the businessmen. If they head over to the lounge, I'll direct them away from Lagrange. Yeah, well, they do. So, I mean, they're pretty, pretty well heading away from him anyway. Um, I think they got the, the impression he doesn't like them either. <laughs> what about everybody yeah. else? Um, what was the the award that he won? That was a bioengineering award. Yes. Yeah, bioengineering award. Yeah. Fullborn yeah. McCoy. Mm-hmm. Would someone with medical skills be able to speak 
somewhat intelligently about it, or at least try to chat about uh, it. Yeah, or yeah, that... you know the old old years. I've I've admired you for a number of years. Congratulations on the on the award. You know that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't see why not. They need to have a decent medical skill though, otherwise they trip themselves up really badly. <laughs> Well, let's see. Does Doc look, want to give it a shot? I'm looking, or if I'm not looking, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, Doc. Trick or treat? Okay, hang on. Okay. Well, what is it? What what, what is it you need me to do? Go flaunt your oh, no, medical can't... expertise and congratulate him for his award. Okay, so he's in public somewhere. He's in the lounge yeah, in a over. corner. He's he's he, he, he finished. He, he's come out of the second day. The second day of travel. He's come out of. His um his suite first class suite with his two bodyguards and they're sitting over in a corner, uh, admiring okay. the view and yeah. Okay, we'll mosey on over there, trying to make okay. eye contact before we arrive. All right, can I have off you please? And uh, you don't get these very often. A personality role. The one thing we're not good at. Trick or treaters are here again. Sorry. Yeah, go, 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 go. Man, the doc is as um, likable as me. Well, 45 is average. For most races. So, um, one of the bodyguards moves to intercept himself between Doc Perro and... Um, What his name? <laughs> La Lagrange. 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 Uh, thank you. Um, but uh, and, and 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 Lagrange seems to not want to talk to anyone uh, like the doc. Uh, however, he has been looking at his way over towards Cat uh, quite a bit. Um, I don't know if that means anything to you. Oh dear. <laughs> well, you're the human female. It's it, it's uh, it's so much easier when you're playing a nun because you can just say GTFO to such things and get away with it. All right. Um, does Cat notice this? Like, yes. Or is that that just the doc noticing it? Okay. Um, jazz, jazz kicks cat under the table. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll go over there and speak to him. <laughs> Can you give me a personality role, please? All right. All right. You don't need to press the bodyguards at all. At all. In fact, one of them puts, as you get close, one of them puts his hand his hand up almost on your shoulder or chest to stop you. Mr. Lagrange does not want to be disturbed. Hmm. Well then, I guess I'll be going. No, 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 no. Please, come and join me, says Lagrange. And you hear, and, and everybody else over, over except for Cerise, everybody else hears a quiet, yes, from, <laughs> from Charletta. <laughs> so, what's your name? Uh, my name's Kat. Uh, what is what's your name? <laughs> um, I, um, you, you can you can call me I know you can call me Jack if you like. What do you do for what do you do for a living, Cat? That's a good question. Uh, I'm a computer technician. Really, must be incredibly interesting. I'm in bioengineering myself, so a mathematics background for both of us, I suppose. Yes, I would. I, I do believe so. Uh, I heard me, about your me. award, 
congratulations. I saw it on the, the VidCom. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you to say so. Yes, a lot of... A lot of uh, I can't take all the credit, of course. I mean, a, an achievement like that, a lot of people um, have their have their hand in it at a lot of different levels. Uh, luckily enough, I was the leader of the team, so... Um, leader's prerogative, I suppose you'd call it. How, how long has the research been going for? Well, that particular stream of research has been going for about 15 years. Um, yes, it's a culmination. Um, we've got a lot of work to do still, of course, but... Uh, We've got it perfected. We've got it just about perfected for humans and gazerians. And trilocytes tend not to need our help so much. Um, so, yeah. As a player, do we know what the specific um, thing that they researched was? We found oh, that no, during... No, no. I mean, it, it, I mean it's, it's something, to, something to do with bioengineering. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter, I'd say. Um... Uh, so you said something uh, about limb oh. limb regenerating limbs. lost limbs. Yeah, something about regenerating lost limbs, things like that. Yeah. Uh, biografting, things like that. Cat's going to push a lock and says, uh, y it doesn't work on the Vrus? And he gets a real sour look on his face, <laughs> like he's sucked on a lemon. <laughs> yes, it it, 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 it is one of our lines of research. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working as well. Something to do with the Vrus DNA. Um, and he says that like, almost, you can almost hear that polluted DNA, Vrus polluted DNA in his voice. Um, I, 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 yes, yeah. You didn't happen to come in with any of the Vrusks. Did you, you're not travelling with any of the Vrusks, are you? That's a good question. Um, I've kept my distance from you guys. Yeah, so, no, 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 uh, no. Uh, we uh, mm. have humans and Usurians in the party. And drill sites. And, dra and drill sites, yeah. In my, in my travelling 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 group. Um, yes, no, the Vruska... The Vruska, uh, the Vruska of my homeworld are, uh, quite frankly, uh, you know, confidential, conf being confident. You've been speaking for about half an hour now. You know, the Vruska are enslaving the humans of my homeworld. They, they've got no, the humans have got no choice but to work for the Vruska in their factories or indirectly, indirectly on their farms. It's a terrible, terrible situation. He's rather... No, and fanatical's too strong a word. He's rather strong in his opinions. Why do they have no choice? Because they they can't they can't make a living on their working their own farms, and they and there's no other jobs except the ones that the Vrusk provide in their factories to to the humans. But they're treated as second class citizens. You know, there's no human at all holds a managerial post. Uh, all the humans have the low jobs on the hierarchy. It's 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 it's, it's criminal. It's it, 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 it's 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 almost a form of genocide. So the the chief researcher of a bioengineering research thing is a low position. Me, <laughs> uh, Karatar is my home world, but I haven't been back for about twenty years. He says, um, my company is not based on Karatar, it's not one of the Vrusk, and he almost spits the word when he says it, uh, one of the Vrusk trade houses. No. No. This is, this is interesting to me. How can you be uh, so sure of these problems when you haven't been back for so long and you haven't called it your home? Oh, I get reports regularly. Um, I keep track of my homeworld. I'm like most expats, expatriates. Um, I like to keep track of what is going on. Um, Vizalat, for example, you know, by far the most rapacious trade house on Karatar. I have 
unfortunately, a second cousin who work who has to work for them. He tells me what happens all the time. Um, I mean, even 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 they even do vigilante raids against humans. It's it's a terrible terrible situation. What do these vigilante raids entail? What are they after? <sighs> Punishing humans for standing up for their rights. What, how, how are these humans going about standing up for their rights? Peaceful protest, disruption, disrupting um, the output of, of the factories and, and putting a a, admittedly, putting a a squeeze on the trade houses' bottom lines, but humans have never never heard of Rusk, um, never never destroyed any property. It's all peaceful protest. Interesting. The image he's give, the, the image you should be getting is Occupy Wall Street. Um, the the sit-ins in the intersections for climate change that happened a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that type of level of civil disruption, I suppose you call it. Extinction Rebellion. <laughs> Extinction Rebellion. <laughs> oh, dear. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I I, uh, I I I have a reporter friend who would love to tell you a story to the world. Uh, would do you think you would give her a moment to share your story? And he looks at you with his head head to on one head to one side slightly, and like he's considering, and he goes, mm. possibly. Uh, my views are pretty well known anyway. Um, as long as, as long as I saw a list of questions beforehand and veto rights, I don't see why not. I believe I could get these list of questions for you. I think if this, uh, if if this persecution is 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 indeed happening the way that you're saying is, the the word should be out. Well, all right. Well, yes. If you can get me a list of questions, I I I, I will consider it. The bodyguards are looking uncomfortable at this. How how should I contact you? Will I find you in the lounge? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Uh, after sometime this afternoon. Yep. Sounds good. Excellent. Excellent. In the meantime, can I buy you a drink? Cat grumbles internally and says, "Sure." <laughs> so you spend you, you, so you spend you spend the time between now and lunch not being able to dis disengage yourself from from Jack. Um, uh, he's not he's, he's pleasant conversation just as long as you stay off Rusk um, or race relations or, or or if you stay away from those topics, um, you, you should be okay. So, uh, so yes. Do I, do I get the feeling that, uh, apart from his thoughts about the Vrus, that he's like he comes off as an okay person? Like some people that you speak to just can't get off that topic, and they're obviously burned by hatred. This person obviously is, but like, there's more to him than that. Like, it's he's not irredeemable I don't, I don't know I, from the conversation what what feelings does cat get Mike, give me an intuition roll please about to roll babu for a second uh, mm, sure mm. okay look the rusk the rusk um, oppression of humans on his home world is certainly a pet topic. No. Um, mm -hmm. That's why that's why he left. You know, uh, when he was younger, he couldn't stand he couldn't stand the oppression anymore. And uh, look, 
again, I, I won't call it the light of fanaticism, but certainly the light of somebody with strong opinions on the matter lights up his eyes when that topic comes up. And it takes all your skills of diplomacy and, and, and batting your eyelids and all the rest of it to get the conversation away from that topic over and over and over again. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. so, so he, he, yeah, he is kind of single-minded almost towards... Well, maybe not single-minded, maybe not single -minded, bi-minded, tri-minded maybe. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's taking um, up a lot of room, yeah. It's taking up a lot of room. Mind you, uh, he also gets talking about his the, the bioengineering he does. That takes up a lot of room too. But the light of, of, of hatred towards Brusque doesn't come up in his eyes the way it does when he talks about them. Yeah. Okay. Pardon me. And by the way, I do. there are public data terminals on the ship. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Alright, cool. Um, so lunch, uh, lunch. Uh, he he does ask you to dine with him for lunch. Do you politely turn him down to dine with your friends, or do you, or what? Uh, well, I would s probably say I've got to go talk to my reporter friends to get you this list of questions. Um, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. All right, I'll see you sometime this afternoon. Okay, I'll see you then. All right. Um, Charlotte, Charletta is not that impressed when you, you know, when when um, when when you tell her about the pre-vetted list of questions, but it's better than she had. So she quickly scribbles some down over lunch, and by the end of the time that you guys have lunch and and you know, we'll have a, a, a bit of a chat afterwards, she's got a, a, a list of questions she'd like to ask. On a couple cool. of pieces, on a couple of uh, well, on a um, on a on a um, an, an old fashioned, no, 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 on on an old fashioned paper spiral spring bound notebook. Yeah, the classic reporter's notebook type idea. Ah. Oh. So yeah, um, so do you take that list back to Jack? Yeah. Yep, I I give right. it a quick scan first to see if there's anything that Cat oh, obviously no, thinks it, it, is going to blow up. No, there's nothing. There's nothing obvious there. There is a couple of questions around, um, um, a couple of names from the McCoy from the Fullborn McCoy Board of Trustees, um, but. Uh, they're pretty benign, as in I understand you went to school with, you know, that type of yeah. question. Yeah. So um, it's 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 not obvious by that list that she's not actually interested in his politics, and wants to find out other things. It's at least a bit no, she's, discreet. She, yeah, she's, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's a bit discreet. She's not. She's, she's a pretty good muckraker, in that regard. Okay. To get in there. Anyway, so um, you take the list back to Jack. Jack reads over it crosses out a couple of questions he doesn't f find palatable um, one of them about I understand you went to school with uh huh um, <laughs> apart, from, apart from that apart from that it seems it, it seems pretty benign um, and he said he, he says uh, so where, where when would you like to do this interview um, this afternoon uh, at three for example yeah that sounds good excellent excellent Oh, well, I'll see you all at 3 o'clock then, he says, okay. and he makes his way back to his room, and the bodyguards follow. And they do not, they do not look happy, the bodyguards. Okay? Yeah. So you, go back to Sh you, make, you make your way back to Charlotte, Charletta, and do, tell her the does, time. So go on. Does, does Kat get the impression at all that the bodyguards are not there because he wants them there, and that they might be there from somebody else's influence? Look, it's a possibility. He seems quite comfortable with them. You know how people, you know how when people get fostered with a bodyguard, they feel uncomfortable, you know, around the bodyguard? Yeah. That is not your impression. Okay. He seems more than, he, he seems very comfortable having the bodyguard. Um, he even, he calls them by their first names when he talks to them. Um, they don't drink when they're on duty. 
um, mm-hmm. which is pra- practically all the time. But you know, they're they're, they're you could see that you could see Jack having a drink with 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 them at some stage as part of a leadership management um, technique, you know, loyalty yeah. building technique type thing. So the the impression so, that Cat gets is more that they know things and they're a bit uncomfortable by the questioning, not that they're there trying to babysit him kind of thing. Yeah, I that's think that probably it, yeah. That's a that's that's one way of saying it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, they don't. They don't give. They look pretty inscrutable. Uh, to answer your question, Therese. I was um, just trying to figure out if they hate frosts as much as Jack does. No, no. This is more of a. This is probably this. This. They seem the two bodyguards, just from the body language and that uh, that you've seen of them. They seem to be consummate professionals. But they are also mercenaries. In other words, they're not. Jack does not employ them as regular bodyguards. They're just bodyguards for this trip home type thing. Um, is the impression you get? So okay. they're bonded guards, bonded bodyguards, if you like. Um, it, does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, Charlotte's quite excited and thanks you profusely, uh, Cat. Um, and uh, and says right, come down to my come down come down with me to my cabin. We've got to get the equipment set up before three. Okay. So if you follow her down down to the lower next deck down to her deck down to her cabin on the deck on the deck below, um, mm-hmm. she pulls out a small hollow cam uh, and a couple of uh, uh, compact Krieg lights, um, and says, "Come on," and hands hands these off these these items off to you guys uh, and uh, picks a suitable spot in the um, in the uh, um, uh, lounge probably that corner actually if you see me draw that blue map that blue ar- uh, purple arrow that corner and that coffee yeah, okay. table yeah so and, and and positions the camera more or less on that angle too by the way and says right which of you knew how to operate a camera? Uh, probably no one. No, I can operate a power suit. No, that would be operate. It would be a technician's operate machinery skill. Uh, well, looks like it's me. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, uh, <laughs> um. Doc, Doc, could you sit in the corner and we'll make sure we get the lighting right. We'll do a quick quick film test. So, do you do that, Doc? Doc? Uh, he might not be here. He might be trick-or-treating. Oh, he might be too. Um, let's say, for argument's sake, Doc complies. Uh, and um, you guys, you, the rest of you find PowerPoints with the Krieg lights. Um, and set everything up and set the camera up and it's all set up nice and nice and ready with about 20 minutes to spare uh, You get the light levels right you get the focusing right and everything else you learn how to use the camera properly Can I have a camera operation roll, please? Oh, that's a okay. Uh, you don't know how to work that camera <laughs> Completely baffled Well, I mean we could ask Cerise, right? <laughs> you could <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I can contact him on my Chronicom and ask for a little bit of assistance here. Well, you could ask for, instru- from, 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 for some instruction. And you can do that yeah, I could ask for to... some instructions on how to operate a holocam from him. Or I could go and Google it quickly. From her. Series, you want to give us an operate technician role, please? All right. Okay. Yes, you managed to you managed to teach teach um, uh, Voke enough that he can get by. If you want to give me another roll, Voke, please, and don't stuff it. Okay. Yes, you're successful. Good. Thank God, I'm a level two technician. <laughs> yes. This is the front you point it. Oh, it's a hollow cam though, so it's got more than one lens. That's the problem. Ah. Uh. <laughs> And they have to be focused in on different angles. 
to get the holographic effect. That's the point. That's the problem. It's not just a single camera lens camera. Okay, so three o'clock what rolls round and um, uh, Jack and the two bodyguards uh, re-enter the lounge. Uh, um, Jack grimaces in disgust as he heads towards the uh, the obvious the area where the um, interview is going to take place. Obviously, uh, the two bodyguards be peel peel off, hover nearby, but just out of um, interference reach, shall we say? Um, so yeah, um, as soon as Ben gets back, I'll continue on. And discuss like he's really not looking forward to it. Yeah, and discuss like he's not not, not looking forward to it. Uh, the, the the disgust on his face gets worse when he glances over at the three of us um, uh, playing cards or, or talking whatever they're doing over in the um, dining area or over in a different part of the lounge area. Learning about the finer points of uh, Kratar glass. Yeah, yeah, it's as boring as all shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's even it's it's even more boring than Velocite shit, but yeah. At least Velocite shit occasionally has something interesting in it because they absorb their food. Uh, welcome to the Velocites. Uh, welcome to the Velocites. Watch it. So yeah. Um, yeah, the young one, the younger of the two brusk, ma uh, brusk executives is trying to crack onto you. Um, so it's, it's, it's getting blatantly more and more obvious. D does he keep his shell polished? Does he keep it waxed nicely? Well, he has today. It's been waxed today. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him. Yeah. I you won't totally along, shut him you? down. What? You're going to you string him along and then shut him down. You bastard. That's a terrible thing to do. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I, I mean, uh, how charming is he? Oh, not very. Oh, not very. Comes across more. Comes across slightly creepy. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Come on, Ben. Where are you? I need you back. I came back in chat. Did you? Oh yeah, I see. Um, so, um, as as Jack crosses crosses the lounge, he looks expectantly at you. Um, this would be a good a good point to introduce you to introduce him to your reporter friend. Mhm. Mm I introduce them and uh, the rest of the party. Mm, but except for Cerise. Yeah. Mm -mm. It's rather a, Jack says Jack says it's a rather a large crew for a simple interview, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, cameras are pretty complicated. <laughs> Points at Voke. <laughs> mm. He wobbles a little bit. So he, say, he, said, he, he settles into the chair and the interview continues. And the interview commences. I mean, not uh, he, Ed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Charletta sticks to the... Charletta sticks to the script... Um, pretty much um, as, as the questions are written. Um, Jack answers everywhere from completely openly to rather guarded depending on the question. The closer the questions get to the actual prize um, or and or um, um, that type of those type that area of topic, the more guarded he gets. Uh, when the questions about uh, character, um, he becomes very um, enthused, even hot, uh, in terms of some of his replies. And again, um, he makes claims of of the brusk enslaving the humans through economic economic means. You know that the humans of Qatar are treated as second-class citizens. Um, he refers back to his speech and his um, press release um, quite a bit when those topics are being talked about. 
the interview goes for about half, he's been going for about half an hour or so, um, when all of a sudden Charlotte asks uh, directly um, what uh, Jack LaGrange's uh, connections are to the to the Fulbright, the Fullborn McCoy board, and or its trust, trustees. Um, it wasn't on the approved list of questions. Um, Jack is become. It's obviously he's become very very offended, um, and basically stands up, pulls off the microphone link, and says, "This interview terminated." Gives Charlotte a glare and a half, gives you cat a glare and a half, and storms off back towards his cabin across the uh, across the lounge. If there was a hedge, Cat would be backing up into it and disappearing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, but after, looks after like La, that's after that. Lagrange, yeah, after Lagrange is gone, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte says, "Yeah, see, there's something there. He, yeah, there is something there. He, he wants to hide." Anyway, how, he, uh, uh, hey, go on. How does Babu feel about this with all of his psych- psychosocial? Sh- Social well, that depends. That stuff. depends on how Boo. It depends on how Boo rolls. Uh, that was me, basically asking what should Babu roll because I'm unfamiliar with his skills. Here. Oh, right. would it be okay, empathy sorry. or? Um, well, you, 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 you can do several because it goes for you go for about half an hour or more. So you can give him the empathy roll to start with if he likes. Um, where are you? So it's not medical. It's psychosocial. Here we go. Um, he can give me a psychopathology if he really wants. Uh huh. Okay. The profile that Babu builds up over the half hour, yeah. um, um, basically gives a, an impression of a, um, a very driven man. He's got a lot of hatred, a lot of hatred, but bottled up. Um, some of that comes out in his drive to excel, which is why he had, you know, won the prize in the first place. Um, but there, there, there's, a, there's a lot of hatred, and it's been poisoning that personality for quite a few years, um, which really doesn't come as a surprise, I don't think. To the uh, to the yeah. point where he is delusional, or no, like no, 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 he's just driven. He's just driven okay. to excel and and believe strongly in his beliefs. Um, so uh, so yeah, um, but um, obviously the pri- the, the the board of directors is a um, of the, of the tr- of the trustees. Yeah, it is a so- it is a sore subject. Um, so why it's a sore subject? Uh, that's hard. That's hard to tell from Babu's point of view. Um, Cat will mention the fact that the bodyguards also looked uncomfortable when they saw that list of questions. Uh, so maybe they are an avenue uh, to to question. Yeah, sure. Well, you've, ne- you've, a- you've only ever seen them. You've, you've only ever seen them uh, on duty with Lagrange. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, um, a voice comes on the, a voice comes over the PA system, the ship PA system saying, we're about to enter, we will be entering jump in 15 minutes if you'd like to strap yourselves in or, uh, or, uh, or uh, secure yourselves with the um, Velcro straps uh, in the lounge uh, to watch the transition. Uh, we'll be jumping in 15 minutes. This is your 15 minute warning. Last what do you guys time want to do? this happened, we got boarded by Sather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I guess we'd be strapped. How long are we strapped in when this happens? Oh, 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. I'd see no reason why enough, we didn't, en- don't 
Yeah. Enough to enough to do the enough to do the uh, enough to shut the engines down, put you in zero g, do the jump, flip the ship end to end, and then start the engines again. That's the process. Yeah. Strap in. Strap in. Well, for it. About 15 minutes later, you, you get a 10 minute countdown, a 5 minute countdown, and then a 1 minute 60 second countdown. Um, for a fraction of an instant that your chronicoms do not register, but your brains do, um, outside goes a dull, dark grey, you think, and then the stars are in different positions from where they were a, second ago, a fraction of a second ago. Jump completes it, completed successfully. Please stay uh, restrained. We'll be we'll have the gravity back up in about ten minutes. Um, the ship slowly rotates end to end, um, and you see the the scar the starscape the new starscape do that, uh, and then uh, uh, roughly ten minutes later the, uh, the the gravity builds back up to one g, uh, and the voice over the, the steward comes over the PA. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have completed our, uh, our, our course and are now decelerating towards Krata. We will be there in approximately 47 hours. All right, well, now we'll talk to the reporter lady. So that wasn't what she wanted, right? She still wants more from us, right? Yeah. Yeah, this obviously the way that this is what this is what Charlotte says. Charlotte says the way that Lagrange cut short the interview when the topic of the board came up. It's obvious. My, my, every instinct in me is screaming that he's hiding something. We might have to uh, we might have to cover him sideways once we get to Qatar. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens in the next couple of days. Do you guys want to try and talk to any of the bodyguards if we can ever get them alone? One other thing, before I forget, um, Charlotte uh, does a quick a quick scan through and fast forward of the of the tape. It's not tape; it's digital, of course. Uh, but she grunts in satisfaction, turns around, and hands it to Cat. Oh, you'll want to secure that. Keep, keep, keep this safe, won't you? Is this something that I can duplicate to my uh, file comp? Yeah, uh... I don't know about your file comp, but I don't think you've got enough memory on it for a, on the file comp. That would be weird, because it's like, basically a cop's notebook, where they video and take notes and stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm just talking about yeah, a half hour, a half hour of HD footage. Yeah, you probably. I mean, if, if you put it this way, give me an give me an operate give me an operate computer roll. No, give me a yeah, give me an operate computer roll at a target of two or twenty percent off, basically. You shouldn't have too much trouble. Less twenty? Yeah, it's still. Um, so yeah, so um, yes, you, may, you may manage to make a copy on your file comp. Your file comp is pretty, pretty, pretty chockers now. Uh, and are you going to give a copy? Are you going to give the original copy to Cerise or someone else, or keep it yourself? Y yeah, giving it to Cerise is probably a good idea. Not in public, but yeah, back in our yeah, rooms. obviously no, obviously not in public. So yeah, uh, with that, um, Charlotte says. Charlotte indicates to tear down the Krieg lights and move all the equipment back to uh, back to her cabin. All right, we do that. Okay. Um, Jack does. Jack ne neither Jack nor the bodyguards poke their head out the door um, that night for dinner. Um, um, 
just about everybody's gone to bed except for Cerise and the two to um, Brusk when one of the bodyguards uh, comes out to the lounge and to grab a scotch or something. So yeah, I'll go uh, excuse myself for a minute and, and go talk to him. Is he, you know, evening? I'm, it's quite the um, personality you have there. Mm. He looks you up and down suspiciously and then knocks back a slug of whiskey. Uh, job's a job. Laugh at that. Yes, yeah, I, I, I know that well enough. But uh, at least your guy has more personality than these two suits I have to uh, keep company. Yeah. He doesn't like your he doesn't like your kind much, does he? He really doesn't. He doesn't like your kind at all. No, he doesn't. I... He's, well, actually, you shouldn't hear some of the things he says about you. I I appreciate the filter. I'll order a round, another round, uh, two shots for one for each of us. And it, why is it? Do you have any idea why he hates Brusk so? I think he's just one of those natural bigots. Yeah, he didn't like that interview today. Yes, yes, he wasn't very impressed with your reporter. With the, not you, sorry, that was my fault. He wasn't very impressed with the reporter at all. And I think I think I think the uh, the blue-haired brunette has uh, burnt her bridges as well. Yeah, well, I only saw it from the outside. Hmm. No, yeah, well, he, you guys just uh, got the job to get him there and then turn him over to whoever. Yeah, get him. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, get him to the space, get him through customs and into in, into uh, into the local headquarters, I believe. And then we're on retainer for a couple of days. But still, yeah. Uh, anyway, he's mud in your eye. He says and knocks back the rest of his drink puts the glass down and, and makes to leave the lounge. I'll uh, give him a little, uh, I don't know, salute and say, uh, take care. Yeah, you too, he says as the, as the hatch charge, as the hatch closes. I'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, do you guys want to do anything else this evening? This night? No. No. I'll just pass that information on to the rest of the group. Um, okay. So it yeah. seems like well, talking to him is no longer going to work, so... Well, Cat's going to have to apologize, right? Beg his forgiveness or something. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Don't know if that's gonna work. It's up to you. It's up to you, Cat. That is true. Um. Yeah, you can try. Well, Lagrange, neither Lagrange nor the bodyguards appear in the lounge area the next day. At all. Um, do you want to do anything that evening or during the day? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, and, and the next day, uh, you're due to um, uh, arrive at um, Karata, um in the late afternoon. Uh, early evening, depends on how long it takes the shuttle to get down from orbit and the rest of it. Um, but just after lunch, um, the uh, steward comes back on the radio, on the overhead. Uh, Lagrange still ha Lagrange and the bodyguards still have not shown all day. Um, 
the, but the, the steward says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, um, going to be passing one of the uh, the moons of Karakar very, very soon, uh, and the captain has extended you all an invitation to visit him uh, to see the spectacle on the bridge. To the bridge. Yep. Okay. Okay. This is the same as before, right near the weapons locker? Yes. I'll be. Well, the other side, actually, but yeah. So, as you near Krakar, should be, there should be an R in that. Damn it. Um, the captain obviously issues you the invitation for the passengers to join him on the bridge for the approach for the approach to the planet. Woohoo! Okay, hang on. How so many... the bridge... Sorry? How many people are in here? Like, is it... Uh, the half, dozen crewmen, half okay. a dozen crewmen. Half a dozen crewmen and the captain. Um, the bridge is active. Uh, the bridge is humming with activity as the crew make the final approach manoeuvres. Well, that, through the view screen can be seen a large black void set against the backdrops of stars. Lights begin to appear at one edge as the ship alters its course. Soon, more of the light side of the moon comes into view. Suddenly, the whole of space is illuminated by a flash of light on the dark side of the moon. The crew frantically flick switches as the captain shouts out orders. The captain quickly gets on to the radio and calls up Karatar, do it again, this is the R, uh, Karatar system control. This is the morning dawn, inbound to Karatar uh, and the Gozef City spaceport. We have just witnessed an explosion from the vicinity of, of the Schultz mining colony on the moon Trividus. It appears to be a very large explosion and I fear the colony may have been severely damaged or even wiped out altogether. This should be one P not two. Uh, this is Qatar system control. We acknowledge your report and instruct you to continue your approach to the Gorzov City spaceport, starport. We will take care of things. Over. Morning Dawn acknowledges your instructions to continue your approach to Gorzev City starport. Morning Dawn out. At this point, the stewards, the passengers, Sorry. At this point, the passengers are guided off the bridge and are informed by the steward that the shuttle from the ship will be leaving to land at the starport from the upper airlock in two hours' time. Or rather exciting. Yeah. What would you like to do, if anything? I want to uh, get on the computer and find out about that mining thing that was the name of that mining. Uh, okay. Um, you better give me an operate computer. Uh, you better give me a info. Yeah, that one. Okay, hang on a second. Um, I've got to find the information. Here it is. No, it's not. Here it is. Give me a sec, 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 give me a sec. There it is. Ah, uh, yep, that'll do. That's what you come up with. Uh, 
All right. Uh, does Babu know much about these corporations and who they are linked to? Babu? Yeah, with his oh, finance. Oh, this is... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can give me a, you can give me a, you can give me a finance roll. Is that right? Okay. Um, Babu doesn't recognise any of those names, um, but it's not unusual for mining colonies to have several. Uh, shareholders, both large and small. It's, it's a dangerous operation, and it, it, it no one, or especially on a moon, no one, no one or company wants to put um, wants to put all their eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. But uh, can we find out if any of those three are they majority Rusk owned, for instance? Well, we, you got to search for those three on the computer, are you? Yes. Okay, Artemis is turning the ship. There's that one. Whoa. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's that one. And there's that one. I think I missed the Rajna. Huh, it looks like this as Strones of Finance likes oh, to have... Everything. Well, yeah, <laughs> they they basically have shares in Artemis Research and the Exploration ones, which both have shares in that mining colony. Which means they get hit the hardest, I believe. Well, I'm, cur I'm curious as to the CEOs of those companies or the boards of those companies. Are they brusque or are they tra trading companies? Any idea on that, Matt? I don't Sorry. Know. I, had, I had it muted. Um. That's the information the computer spit. That's all the information the computer spits out at you. All right. All right. Now, whether there is other information in the computers, or in other computers, or whatever else, but that's the information the computers give you. All right. Maybe you can find out about the other shareholders as well. Search them up. Uh, so Abelman Properties. Abelman Property. Ableman Properties, Gangreel Industries, Omega Holdings, and Rajnot Finance Incorporated. What was the third one? Omega Holding. Where did that one come from? Uh, Artemis Research. Uh, did we get something on Rajnot? Oh, Omega Holdings. Omega Holdings. There we go. And then Rajnot Finance Incorporated is the last. Mm -hmm. That information comes up without so much digging at all, what I've just given you there. Uh, they're all based on triad, or casting specifically. What do we know about casting or triad? Which one's the plant, uh, which one's the system? Uh, Cassidine's the system. Ah. Yeah, Cassidine's the system. Uh, whatever information you have is on the web page. Okay. okay. 
um, and also Cassidine Development Corporation uh, is headquartered on Cassidine. Funny the that. The CDC, yeah. yeah. The CDC. But there is no links that, that you've been able to discover so far between the CDC and any of these companies. In fact, you haven't been able to discover any links between any of the mega, the mega corporations and, and these multi-system companies, the ones that are multi-system. Right. Well, the CDC is known I mean, for stuff like this, right? For these small mining operations? Uh, yeah, it is. But, I mean, Ragnot Finance and Estonia Finance, um, I mean, there's nothing unusual about them investing in uh, a, a venture like this, you know? They're a finance yeah. company. Um, Amiga Holdings, well, obviously it's a holding company for something. Or someone. Um... And it wouldn't surprise you that the Schultz Exploration owns part of Schultz Mining. You know. As for the others, maybe they're doing some research on out, out there as well, maybe. It doesn't know. seem to draw any conclusions. Well, I don't know. It's up to you guys to draw whatever conclusions you like. The South are behind it. The South Arabia. The South Sounds about. Is it, is it, it going to be the South or is it going to be the Red Devil? The Star, Star Devil. Devil. Star Devil. Okay. Right? Okay, you convinced me it's the Star Devil. Okay. Well, or is the Star Devil a Sapphire? He's a worm. Yeah. That gets you. That gets you a bit confused, doesn't it, guys? <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, so yeah. you, spend, you spend two hours uh, digging through the files, and that's what you find. That's what you get out of the system, uh, the shipboard system, which by this range would probably be locked into the planetary system um, by now. All right. Because, um, you know, with two-way links. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the public data nets, basically, that what, we've, what, you've gone, what you've gone through there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to follow up out of that info. Uh, uh, well, does the what's the public data net saying about the explosion? Are they reporting it yet? Not yet. It's also possible that as drones of finance, because it says through its loans it is believed to indirectly control a number of other companies. It's also possible that they've given loans to like the uh, four companies that are based on Triad. Yep. So uh, what there's about... a conspiracy theory for you. Does, Char <laughs> Does Charletta have any um, contacts on the local planet where she can find out about the explosion? No, not yet. Um, I'll be making I'll be making some obviously because it sounds like a, an interesting story to supplement my interview. I guess we'll wait till we get there. Okay. Well, two hours later, or after the you're ushered off the bridge, um, everybody um, um, shows up at the. Uh, top docking lock uh, and one by one you move through the um, airlock into a into a shuttle um, Jack again gives very nasty looks to all three of the brusque and not quite so nasty looks towards Charletta and Cat and the rest of you in general uh, definitely seats himself away from that from the, where you would be yeah that area um, and um, yeah, um, the the two Vrusk uh, have, have got their briefcases, um, and uh, you guys have got whatever carry-on luggage you took. Um, it looks like Master Jack's stuff is is in the cargo hold because he didn't he didn't have any hand luggage. Um, and obviously, there's a couple of bulges underneath the jackets of the bodyguards, as you would have noted earlier. So, yeah.
Um, so it's a short trip down to uh, Gorzorf uh, City Starport. Um, Oopsie daisy. Um, so the shuttle, it touches down and all goes quiet as its motors cut out. The airlock begins to hum as it slowly opens to reveal a bright pink sky and orange-yellow sun. Before you lies the starport with its administrative tower and landing base. I've got a map for you if you want to go. So, yeah, there's a map of the starport for you. So where do we come in? Does the ship, the shuttle land at one of those two landing pads? No, one of that one there, the middle one. The one I'm pointing to. The one marked Golden Dawn. It's not Golden Dawn, is it? It's the one marked that one is. Right. Um, where was I? Uh, yeah. yeah, a ground transport truck is moving towards the shuttle. And parked by the landing ramp is a ground car and a ground cycle. At the bottom of the ramp stand three uniformed Rusk, one of whom has a forearm computer. A body comp, basically. You are the first down the ramp to the waiting customs officials. Waiting at the bottom. Uh, the three Rusk politely ask you for your names and your documentation, entering in the details on the forearm computer and awaiting the reply. Um, I'm assuming you're not kicking up a stink at all? Nope, no, we're complying. Stick yeah. to the cover yeah. story. Yeah. Um, so, by this time, the ground transport has pulled up nearby, and two Rusk have gotten out. They're dressed in overalls, and you can see the Vizlac logo shown on their breast. The two bend down to inspect the front landing gear of the shuttle. Meanwhile, just as you are finishing up with the customs official, Schultz, Schultz, Charlotte says, Charlotte says, I'm just going to have a last word with Lagrange and see if I can't get any more out of him. You go ahead and find us somewhere to stay, okay? And what was that, the... She, what, sorry? What, what was... The, what the officials were... The, or the, the guys checking the luggage were from what trade house? No, the guys Vizlat? checking... No, no, no. The Vizlat was checking... The two Vizlat technicians were checking this landing gear. That's what, okay. That's good, thanks. And with that, Charlotte moves back partway up the ramp. Meanwhile, the customs officials direct you to the Starport Administration Building. That one. <laughs> uh, where your bags can be collected and checked. Now, before we go any further, is anyone carrying a rifle? I do have a rifle in my gear. In, yeah, but it's in your gear. It's not on you. Yeah, I'm not carrying a weapon on me. Yeah, okay. What weapons Leather did they have let us carry on the ship as opposed to have stowed away? Well, they didn't. They stowed, They made you stow all, all, all of them away and gave them back to you um, on the, as you entered the shuttle. Yeah. Sorry, I should have said okay. that. So then, so then that everything is, is, is packed, I guess. Well, well so you can pistols. You can carry pistols. Yeah. Like, I have my Sonic Stunner, but my rifle's okay. still in my bag. Okay. Yeah, then Jazz would have done the same as well. Right. What about you, Kat? Uh, Kat's rifle would be in her bag uh, if she would have her needle or pistol on her slide arm underneath her her shirt arm. Mm-hmm. Well, the, cust the customs agent does... Uh, the customs agent... Um, does not spot the pistol, the needle of pistol, and doesn't really seem concerned about about the other pistols you're carrying, um, that people are carrying. Um, so yes, directs you towards the admin building where you can collect your baggage and um, yeah, and then get a monorail into goes the city, I suppose. Not goes the city, goes the city. Yep, we'll go there. Get our stuff. Yeah. Okay. So you're only a few metres, 10, 15 metres if that, and it's a 10 metre square by the way on that map. You're only about 10, 15 metres away from the, f from the foot of the ramp. As you move forward towards the admin building, you hear a sharp crack of a discharging laser 
and see a bright flash coming from the ground car up ahead, followed within one to two seconds by the deafening twin booms of near simultaneous frag grenade explosions. Turning, you can see Jack Lagrange, his two bodyguards, and Charlotta are all lying dead or badly injured a short way from the base of the shuttle ramp. The three customs officials look shocked. The two Rusk executives are standing at the top of the ramp in the op open outer hatch of the shuttle's airlock. They are both in the process of drawing laser pistols from their bags. I run towards... Hang on. Oh, okay. Can I get... Let me get this loaded. I didn't have it loaded. Hang on. Finish. Yeah, hang on a sec. The two Rusk executives, those are the ones that were traveling with us on the ship. Mm -hmm. That's the ones that tried to chat up. Cerise. Cerise. Well, I was not expecting that. Well, at the Did moment, the I'm going to. Come from them? And the shots come from them? They're the only ones uh, not shocked. I thought there was some, there was some car on the, the ground. There. The deafening twin booms of near simultaneous frag grenade explosions. Two grenades. Yeah, the, see that see that ground car there? Yep. You were looking more or less in that direction, and you saw the flash and heard the crack coming from that direction. And now the Rusk executives are drawing out laser pit while all the other yep. Rusks standing around are all shocked. Well, we're not shocked. No, we're not. So it must have been us who did it, right? Yeah, it must have been. I'll pull my... I'll pull my... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just, just, just hang on. <laughs> Sorry. If you want to pull up, if you guys would like to pull up the, um... Uh, um... Combat Tracker, you'll find some stuff's been loaded in for you. I'm still in the process of loading it. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna call him. I'm gonna call it that because that's what it basically is. Oh, I don't know about that one. I hate when it does that. Right. So, can I get an issues off everybody, please? What happened to the two Rust technicians? Or they're just kind of. Irrelevant. Uh, they're, okay, okay. They're, they're, you can't see them at the moment, but they look like they've ducked down behind the ramp and are cowering behind the ramp. Okay. That's a sensible so, thing Kat, to do. Cat, was that 10 for you, was it, Cat? Yep. And so what do I get 10 to Jazz for? I don't know. Uh, the second one was Babu's. Uh, no, that was just me double clicking by accident. Baboo's yeah, right, right, right down the end. He... Right, okay, give him so thirteen to Voke. Um, fifteen for the dock. Cerise is a seven. Uh, and Jazz is an eleven. Which is even better. Okay. Give me a sec.
We should have got. Yeah, we should have gotten paid in advance. <laughs> well, Doc gets to see if he can save her. Um. Yeah, oh, we did that. get paid in advance. <laughs> no. Well, I've got another question about weapons. Would they have been? Would there have been any concerns from customs if we were carrying melee weapons? Uh, they weren't. Okay. Depending on what it was, I'm talking. I th I'm assuming you're talking your your force axe. Uh, Jazz carries a sonic sword. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so what did I say? Um, damn it! 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 Okay. So, first actor happens to be um, the eldest of the two Rusk. He squeezes off a laser pistol shot into one of the Um, uh, the, um, one of the, one of the bodyguards. Um, so, that's his action. Um, do you want to call him neutral, or do you want to call him enemy? Leave him neutral for now. Okay. Doc, now I know you're off, I know you're off voice, um, but what do you want to do? I'm assuming I'm you're guessing. typing. Nope. Okay, okay, we'll put him on hold. Voke, what are you doing? Um, well, I don't have a quick deploy thing, so... Uh, can I pull out my Sonic Center and still move? Uh, yeah, but you only do a walk move, not a full run. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Which way are you running? Towards the Rust. The executives. Towards, uh, towards the, ex the Rust executives. Okay. That's your action. End your turn when you're ready, please. Jazz? Um, Jazz will pull out his pistol, uh, flip on his outreach street. I don't know if he can do anything else beyond that. Okay. Right. End your turn then, please. Okay. Uh, okay. From the vehicle up which, I'm, which I've been pointing to on the map. Comes a... That should be the wrong dice. Uh, comes a single laser blast aimed at... And it's a fair way away. So it misses. <laughs> Uh, so that's right. It, it was it was it was aimed at one of the, it was aimed at the party. It was at the you guys basically. So it was aimed at Voke, who had pulled here pulled a weapon and turned back. Uh, the laser shot missed you though. Okay. Cool. All right. Cat. Wow. Okay. Um, so they're weren't shooting at us. Weren't, weren't expecting this, were you? <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, well then. 
she's going to follow suit. Uh, and she'll get out a needle pistol uh, and switch on her albedo screen. Okay. Uh, she has she she has the 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 slide arm on her needle pistol. Would she be able to get a shot off? Yeah, but I'm not going to aim her. Yeah, true. Yes, I, yes. I'll let you get, I'll let you get a shot off. But I'm not going to let you use the aim for the careful aim pistols. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, does, who, who are you she shooting at? Does she does she see the person that shot at us, or too concealed? No, it, it came from the. Ca- it looked like it came from the car, but it was definitely a low power laser. It was definitely a. a, a def- it, it, it was definitely, um, most likely a laser pistol. And if it came from the car, possibly left out from the window of the car, the ground car. Yeah, and just so that it's in my head, nice and safe. Uh, where mm-hmm. are the two execs? Uh, at the top of the ramp, top of the board of, of the disembarking ramp of the. Um, Shuttle in the open airlock, in the outer open airlock, or open outer airlock. They and don't then, seem to be taking cover. Yet. And then Lagrange and Charlotte and the two bodyguards. The two bodyguards are healthy, but the other two are. One injured. of them just got shot. No, they're all. No, the two bodyguards aren't healthy. Uh, the four of them are lying uh, a, a short ways, like two, me- three meters from the bottom of the ramp. Uh, and it's obvious that a couple of explosions have gone um, gone off amongst them because they're scattered like, you know, they're not all blown over in one direction. They're scattered outwards. Um, and if you want any more information, you're going to have to do a... You're going to have to use an action to, to do an okay. ins- to do That's an fine. Yeah. All right. Uh, she won't Come shoot on, at anything. Yeah. She won't shoot? It's kind she won't of, shoot anything. It's, it's kind of awful that there's no tokens on the map. Uh, but, uh, well, yeah. it's too it's too it's too small a scale. I mean, each square yeah. is ten meters, right? So you just have to do it in, in your imagination. You do have a shot at the executives if you want. All right, she'll shoot at one of the executives. All right, but it's um, it's a twenty-seven meter shot. Yeah, with uh, with a, uh, a her body comp amping up and taking two range increments off. It's point blank. Oh, you have oh. that too, nice. Yeah, just, I don't know why you all don't. But anyway, go if you like. I didn't before because I didn't have enough money for it, but now that we got our pay dirt, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, let me projectile. Devil's number. Um, no, unfortunately, you you, did, you don't manage to hit um, hit, hit one of the Vraskas. It's probably because it was a quick shot. Yeah. Um, which would be the main reason. So when you had your turn, any sharp? Okay. Is anybody looking to... Now, be honest about this, guys, please, because obviously the people running and shooting towards the shuttle aren't going to be... But is anybody looking towards the... Um, that vehicle. I am not. Probably looking at uh, our employer who was supposed to pay us, who's now dead. Maybe dead. Um, I wasn't. I haven't turned around to look. I, I was wanted to know where the original stuff came from, so I don't know if that's the car. Well, or it what. came from both. It came from both directions. That's the thing. I was more worried about not the grenades, but the the first shot the laser cracks that we heard that the one that, that's the one that came from the vehicle that my purple, purple arrow is pointing to all right okay. you so that's can what see, i'm looking at okay you can see someone stand up from behind from behind the car make some sort of adjustment to to um the rifle that uh the individual is carrying and then hurriedly climb in the passenger seat of the car human or brusque um, that was a good question. That was a, um, that's executives, here we go. Uh, that was a human female. Okay. Well, it's hard to tell whether it's female or male, but it didn't have a beard, put it that way. But it was definitely human. 
or it was a very, very good disguise on a thalassite made to look like a human. Or it was a Yazirian who'd had his lo lost their um, wing membrane somehow. But it was and that's what I think certainly. was the initial shot? Hey, that's what you think was the initial shot. Okay. Now, don't forget, it, it's, it's, what is it, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, at least about 50, 55 metres away, that car, give or take. Okay? Yep. Uh, the second Nebraska executive, ignore that, I will be, uh, takes a pot shot at Cat. Uh huh. Uh, with the laser pistol set on five, so then does 27 points of laser damage to, to Cat. Cool. Albert, Albedo screens and all the rest of it apply as per normal. It's a standard laser pistol. Okay. Cerise. So I oh. turn on my screen and then I look for cover. I do not draw my weapon. Okay. Um, and I scream out in terror. Okay, um, there's a uh, the 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 three exe the three of the three customs frusk have dived underneath the ramp. Um, the the two technicians you see underneath the ground truck. Other possible cover could be um, the ground car parked nearby, um, and possibly even the ground cycle parked nearby. Um, but that's about it. Uh, the ground car nearby. I'll run for cover there. Okay. You going to dive under it, into it, into it, on top of it? Uh, behind it, between, it looks like there's a couple vehicles there, so in between them. Yeah, okay. In between, on the, on the far side of the ground car from, from the executives? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, when you finish every turn, Babu, you're up. All right. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> he would be grabbing out, actually. Uh, does Babu normally have a screen? I Let don't know. Check. Does Babu normally have a screen? I don't remember. I don't. Uh, those details, I don't remember. I've got too much else to remember. Yeah, I think he has a screen. screen. I mean, everyone has a screen, pretty much. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have lived now, this long without... <laughs> that sky blue arrow, I think that's yours, Jazz. What are you pointing towards? I don't have an arrow. That might On be cats. Map. It might be cats, might it? The one that just Why do moved. I have an arrow there? I don't know. I'm asking, the, that's just what I'm asking you the question. And the green one just appeared. That's Cerise's. That's Cerise. Yeah, no, it's all good. All right, uh, Babu would be switching. He does have an albedo screen. He would be switching that on and probably running and c getting cover with Cerise. Um, right. That's all right. So, I said, the Vrusk the, the Rus Customs officials uh, make their way uh, underneath the ramp. And that's an issue for a new round, please, people. Bad time for Doctor for, for Paul to go offline. <laughs> well, this has certainly been at sight. I say as you I said, yawn. Yeah, I just noticed that as you yawn. It's not you. It's yeah. half past I, I, midnight. I know. I know. Are you are you, are you being sarcastic? Or are you being are you being truthful? <laughs> it is exciting, you know. The Rusk are they the terrorists too? I don't know. I haven't shot anybody in a while, so I'm getting excited. <laughs> if it matters, Matt, I would think that Doc would go to try to give first aid to Charletta. Yeah, I would too. Uh, and that's, that's what I'm basically pretty much what I just typed. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, oh, that's okay. All right, I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna do the two execs. And I've got my new body comp to assist me in my aiming. So that one's, and that one's, where's the other, there he is, and I've got, I won't bother rolling for the customs officials. Don't forget, um, Ryan, one of the biggest superpowers to the body comp is if you've got a brain scan, uh, you can automatically apply stim dose to you, so you're... Yeah, I know. I don't have that. Dose grenade. Yeah. That's credits. I don't. I decided to go for the engineer for the super calculator and for better range. Range. Okay. So Doc's up first with a roll of. Oh, that's still 15 from last time. So I'll put him down at one because we're getting out of the way. Huh? That's not you, Jess. Yes, it is. It's you, Jess. You're next. Uh, You're what's first. the distance to the two rescue decks up in here? Now you didn't move, did you? Right, so it's about twenty-five. It's about a twenty-five meter shot, maybe a fraction over. Twenty-five. Assuming you haven't moved. Right, I haven't moved. Yeah. Okay. Um. So Jazz will just walk towards them. Okay. Um, and then take a shot. All right. Well, whatever your walk is, can you can take so, it off the twenty-five meter range? Yeah. So walk is thirteen. So it'll be 12 meters away. Okay, you, you're not, you're not, you, you, you're, you're still about two meters short of the ramp. The ramp's 10 meters. Okay, so basically you're pretty close to um, Charlotte Lagrange and the two bodyguards. Okay. And Doc, of course. Right, and uh, you're going to shoot the one on the left or on the right. Uh, let's just say number one to make it easy. Yeah, the one on the left. Okay. All right, so that's <coughs> going to be. Short range. Mm -hmm. um, aside from short range, uh, there's no care pulling because I moved. Um, is there any other modifiers that I need to take into account? No, they're not, take, cover? they're not taking cover. They're just standing there and blazing away. Okay. And then which, as Jazz which just strikes, walks right up to which, them. Yeah, which strikes you as rather unusual for. It's certainly not. I mean, I mean, I mean they're, they're, they're at the outer open hatch of an airlock. There is room for them to duck around either side of the airlock and shoot out the airlock, but they're not doing that. As though they're not combat trained? Possibly. Or as though they're kind of like... On a or they have something they have to do first. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Right. So uh, this is a laser rifle, but it's just a pistol. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, so what, what was it set on? <laughs> just like my laser rifle, set on 10. Okay. Well, your rifle. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, there's 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 half your power pack gone. Uh. The power backpack. Oh, oh, ow, ow, hurt, hurt, ow. <laughs> um, and I think he's the dead. Elder, the the elder Vraska was on the left of the pair as, as you were facing them. Uh, falls to the ground. And half okay. out of the half down the ramp, and you know. Um, uh, with a cauterized wound um, quite middle through the middle of them. Cerise, you are over by the vehicles um, behind the ground car. So you I said? yell out to the young Gervrusk, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, is that is that all you do? Just, and looking around, yell. trying to see what else is going on. I expect security to show up here shortly. Well, it's, so far it's been three, it's been four, four and a half seconds. Since right, I know. Since the, hey, it's yeah, been five I know. Since the thing, okay. Um, the ground car, and for this I am going to need nice jazz. Papers. Hey, our babies would have had such beautiful shells, shiny and hard. <laughs> I feel sick. That's right, Nate. I could have given you a nice brood of 25. <laughs> of course, we could have dined on a few of them, right? So this car, this ground car um, uh, starts up and peels away and starts heading down this way. 
spike round car who's so tiny. Yes, I know. It's still too big for the map. It's ten meters, so yeah. That's what that one. That's what that that one does. Um, out the window, passenger window, um, there's uh, another crack of a laser shot, which hits. Uh, Voke, hit Voke. How dare you? And strikes you, the laser shot strikes you for 32 points of laser damage, obviously. Oh. Meanwhile, the remaining Brusque executive takes a pot shot at Jazz and strikes. For 26 points of laser damage. Okay. Babu, you're up. Oh, he's dead. I can take him out. All right. Um. There's the sniper and exec two. Okay. Um, how far away is exec two from Babu? Uh, where was Babu? Did Babu move forward? Yeah, he moved to where Cerise was. Oh, in that case, well, if you look at the map, the vehicles around the left uh, are on that right-hand edge of the landing pad, and the, and and so it's about 10, 15 meters, more or less, give or take. Call it 15. It's closer to 15 than 10. Put it that way. Yeah, uh, Babu's. But 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 but. but. That's to the base of the ramp. If you just want to get him in a crossfire, it's closer to it's closer to thirteen. Oh, Babu would be wanting to go up there and smack him on the face with a nightstick. In which case, in which case, it's fifteen to the foot of the ramp and ten meters up the ramp. Pretty sure so Babu's not that fast. Twenty-five. Yeah, he's that fast. He moves twenty-five with run. Run per turn thirty. So can he charge with his nightstick? Yeah, well, the last ten meters is straight up the ramp, so I don't see why not. All right. Uh, I gotta get this right because the the nightstick is a different modifier than his force axe, wouldn't it be? That's, that's right. It is. Uh, all right. Uh, night, night stick or stun stick? Stun, yeah, stun stick. I'm just looking at his thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that's plus five. That's a hit. Oh, that's it. All right, and he'd obviously have that set to stun. Obviously. Give Trying to get a prisoner here to make a friggin' sense of this. Uh. He does not appear stunned. Actually, he does appear stunned, but not from your stun stick. <laughs> Interesting. I ge I'm That's guessing that there's not enough. Yeah. There was the baby. Cat the Haskell. All right. Uh, now, there is now there is now a blob. There is now a blob in May Lee with the the. the, the Second Vrask executive at the top of the ramp. Wait, cool. so when you say he appears stunned, does that mean he looks like he's fallen over, stunned, unconscious? Or? No, 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 no. Nope, nope. He's firing quite nastily at you, actually. Well, he's going to change to Babu now because Babu, you know, is in his face. But <laughs> so, All right. cat. Uh, cat's go going to. Uh shoot this Rusk exec because she doesn't know anything um, about him being stunned or anything weird. Um, you got your needle rifle out, I believe. Or pistol out, I believe. Needle pistol with sleep darts, yes. Yep. Babu should have the stamina to resist that if I accidentally hit him. <laughs> Do you want a scheme to suit? <laughs> if he has a scheme suit. Yeah, he you're does all have good his... there. You're, you're all good. 
And uh, so do me the, t the D10 damage, please, and then I'll roll the uh, his stamina sleep check. Uh, no, he doesn't go down. He takes the damage. Uh, doesn't go down, and Babu can see he doesn't even wince from the needles. From the needles. Vogue, interesting. You're up. So I shoot my electric stunner, and woohoo! All right. At who? At who did you shoot that at? Uh, the executive. Right. Well, taking into account the cover he's got from, from um, Babu, I think you hit Babu. It's not a critical fail. It's not a critical. It's not a very good hit either. Well, it hit the ramp. Ah, it hit Babu. Shooting yeah. in the This is kind yeah. of where the the uh, the you got in the way. Computer vision is a little bit cheesy. The electro stunner is like a contact lightning bolt type thing. Mm -hmm. Not something that could probably reach twenty five meters. It's a sonic stunner. Hang on, has it got I a range? Mean, yeah, hang on. Yeah, that, the, the Sonic Stunner you know, is a rifle. Sonic Stunner is a rifle. It's a pistol. You're talking the Electro Stunner. And the Electro Stunner's only, the Electro Stunner's only got the ranges it's got just because you can't shoot past its range. You've got to work out its range first and then take two ranges off. So yeah, if, so it's outside, you, if it's outside yeah. of um, extreme range, you still can't hit. All it does is, all it doesn't change the range of the weapon. All it does is change your chance to hit with the weapon. That's not the same thing, Brian. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. using a Sonic Stunner, which is like a 50 meter range, and I'm what 20 meters At away. 25. 20, yeah, 25. Okay. Yeah. Because I moved. So, all right. So yes, you're in range. Yes. Yeah, so you, you, now, was it the Electro Stunner or was it Sonic Stunner? Sonic Stunner. Right. Give me a second. The Sonic Stunner is more range. That's right, oh, just for a second. Okay. Yep, no, he's, he doesn't go down for that one either. And Doc's working on the working on the bodies. Can I get issues off everybody, please? Ten of the folk. Uh, Eleven for Cat. Um, what is the cat? 13 for Jazz. 8 for Babu. And Cerise got 14. That's Rose. Ah, oh, we didn't do the Babu. Uh, can I get a stamina check off Babu, please? Coming. So it's Christmas. And Babu does not suffer any ill effects from the sun, Sonic Stunner. Uh, so I've got to do initiative for the. Oops, I've got to do that. Ignore that. Uh, oh, wow. Um. And the exec. And let's kick this battle off. Cerise. Um, I'm looking oh, you around. Got no answer, by, you, you got no answer, by the way. I know. I'm so disappointed. What a... Oh, well. So what are the... I, I'm looking around. I'm trying to sit, see what's going on, what the uh, customs people are up to, the technicians, if they're just all hiding, if there looks the like there's a response and... team. The technicians and the custom guys are all hiding. Although one is, one is, one does have a comm link to his, to his side of his head. Um, is that all you want to do? Nothing else? Okay. Yeah. Jazz. All right. Uh, jazz. Ooh, first thing I'm trying to do. Let's get a little angry. Let's get a little angry. Almost, but not quite. No. Okay. So. So Jazz's going to um, pull out his sonic sword and walk uh -huh. up to uh, the rust on the ramp next to Babu. And 
And I'm assuming attack. Yeah, would I be able to squeeze in an attack, a swing at him? Yeah, yeah, well, run, jog, you can squeeze an attack, you're only 10 metres away, you've got a, 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 a rate better than that. Alright. That's a hit. With your sonic sword. Uh, that's a serious wound to the rusk, uh, but he yep. is not down. Uh, and again, you note he doesn't seem to flinch from the damage. Um, can yell? Can Jazz yell out? I think, he, nope, I think nope, he's on drugs. Nope, no, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope, you may not. Not this okay. round. Cat. All right. Um, now remember, it's, now it's, it's Babu who's seen the stuff, not you. Yeah, and there's there's two people in melee now. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um. All right, uh, and she's going to take a look around. Uh, she's not going to shoot in the melee again, especially when her dart had no effect. Uh, she's going to look around, uh, see if we're getting back up, or whether there's any more of Russ coming, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, no, nobody's getting back up. Um, Doc has moved to Larange. Um and appears to be looking, you know, doing diagnosis and first aid on Larange. Um, apart from that, that's about it. Okay. Okay. I'll try uh, my luck again. Shooting into combat. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, you manage to get very successful in striking vote in striking um, jazz. Oh you damage please. Uh, he has to do a stun save. Oh. A stamina save mate, please. Off you jazz. Uh, yeah. Does jazz have a, a current stamina? Protection? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's an anti shock so he doesn't have to work in class. Yeah, hang on, is that you got anti shock or anti sonic? It's this is anti shock. This is the same thing. Is that anti shock? Yeah, because this is only stun. Is electro stunner. Sonic it, stunner it, is a sonic headphones. Yeah. Sonic headphones is a sonic stunner. So, uh, you've got a sonic stunner. No, the sonic, sonic stunner is uh, no. AS for defense as an anti shock. Oh, it didn't? Yeah. yeah. It's the yeah. same, same, same anti shock. It's the same anti shock um, implant for all stun weapons, whether it's a sonic stunner, electro stunner, or a stun stick. Special kind of weapons, mines, sky jet weapons, grenades, beam weapons. The electros, uh, we got sonic weapons, don't we? Sonic weapon sprayer, projectile, mines, gyro jet, grenade. Oh, it is a beam weapon. Sonic stunner. Yeah, sonic or AS will protect against it either. So, yes, you don't have to worry about it. So how did I hit Jazz? Huh. Because Jazz and Babu are both at the top of the ramp fighting this guy in the airlock. Okay. You didn't hear Jazz say I move forward? No, no, I heard him. Yeah. Right. Still thought I could get a shot. Get someone alive. Uh, Babu? Mm. Uh, you you take the executive two's laser pistol in the face for twenty six points. Your suit will protect dokey. you, of course. Yeah. Speaking of Babu, uh, let me just uh, what was that? That was twenty six. So that's six points down. Why six with a laser pistol? Six SEU. A six SEU, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, but, hmm. Babu wouldn't doesn't know too much about um, what kind of drugs or what this person could be on. Like no, he doesn't. A, he yeah, he doesn't. He he doesn't because he's not a medic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so with that said, he knows that something's weird, but probably doesn't know 
much about it. Uh, so he's probably going to hit him with the uh, the uh, Sonic, st the uh, stun stick again. Okay, go for it. Nope, he misses. He misses. Okay. Um, the car um, goes out of sight down the alleyway. Uh, but right before it moves around the corner, there's a last crack of a laser. Like simultaneous initiatives, in other words, gentlemen. Uh, there's a light last crack of a laser back towards you guys. And that's almost a critical hit um, against I don't know why Babu's copping all this but Babu's copping all this uh, for 24 points of laser damage in the back <laughs> although it might have been a it may have been aimed at the executive you never know uh, and Doc's working on patients. What are we doing? People have issues is what we're doing, please. Nice D100. It's impressive initiative, series. Yeah, I'll get you to roll that one again, please, Saru, if you don't mind. Okay, it's on 15, and Cerise is on 12. I can hide that one because he's gone, and that one because he's not gone, and finally, and Cat, you're up. All right. Um she won't be shooting into melee again. Uh, she'll actually run up to the dock uh, and ask him if he needs any assistance. Check on the guards, is what he says. But that's your action for you. Cerise, you're up. Uh, she's going to come out from behind cover and, st and move to the base of the ramp and still okay. look around. Okay. Uh, is that all? Yep. Okay. The executive changes target to Jazz and hits Jazz at point blank range with a laser with a sixteen point laser blast. Babu's time to shine. Babu's time to shine. Never Stun mind. Hit. Yeah, the mind. Jazz? Uh, can Jazz maneuver around to smack him from behind? Uh, Not fighting time. through the doorway, no. Ah, okay. All right, Jazz will just take another swing with his sonic sword. Uh, Jazz will yell out, I think he's high on something, and then swing. Okay. Well, you well and truly connect. Uh, and that causes him to fall to the floor of the airlock. Um, and he doesn't move much anymore. Vogue, what are you doing? Well, I'll check on one of the guards and put my electro stunner. Okay. Um, and Doc does his thing. That's end of combat, effectively. Um, the yeah, two well. guards, the two guards have massive, um, have bled quite a bit in the 15 seconds or 20 seconds it's taken to, uh, to finish that firefight. Um, you can still hear, um, a, a car at high speed taking corners somewhere back in the middle of the buildings there. Uh, um, and, um... But both both guards are both guards are, uh, are past. Uh, uh, both guards have gone. Um, Doc sits back in his heel and shakes his head as he realizes Jack's gone, and uh, Charlotte has gone as well. So 
So Jazz will start applying first aid to Exec 2, the one just downed. Okay. Um, at the same time, yelling, can someone chase after the car? Someone he's, who can drive? He's pretty dead, you think? You think? All right, well, never mind then. Okay. Does anyone want to grab a, grab a vehicle? Uh, I'll grab the hover cycle. Okay, give me an operate machinery, please. Oh, nice. Okay, well, it's, it's actually not a hover cycle, it's a ground cycle, but that's beside the point. Okay, and, and w what do you do with this ground cycle? Start it up and go after the car. Uh, would you like to show me on the map with arrows which way you'd like to drive? Yep, down that way. And then when you get to the end, which way do you want to go? Do I see any signs of anything when I get to this T? Mm, you do, but not relevant to which way you go. I'll give you I'll give it to you the description in a second. Okay. So um, as you round the corner, as you round, whoopsie daisy, as you round that corner there, in hot pursuit, um, there's an ambulance um, lying up against the side of the wall uh, there. Uh, with a with a, a a pretty nice side swipe down the side of it. Are you stopping? No. All right. Um, you get to about that T junction, give or take, maybe a little bit further around, in uh, around the side of building three, when you hear a God Almighty screech of tires, followed by a, a large crump sound. All right. Uh, it looks like now that is elevated. That's elevated. That's elevated monorail. Okay. Okay. That is a ground car exit going underneath the monorail, underneath the bridge, to a roundabout, which then leads to obviously a major high, a, a, a pretty major road outside. Okay. This is the exit. The other one's the entrance. Okay. Yep. The there is a ground car lying against one of the pylons here, or just off the even a bit, a bit further down, um, crumpled and in flames. There are a couple of security guards, uh, Rusk and humans in Rick outfits. Um, all the security guards running both towards the car, and now there's a couple running towards you. They have. They are armed, but they appear to be non-lethal, and they're indicating for you to slow down and stop. If I take a quick look, does it look like this is the car that escaped? It's pretty similar, yeah. And I don't see anybody going down towards the highway high speed. No, 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 then, definitely not. Then I stop. Right. It looks like it looks like the ground car missed the curve and and rolled and hit the rolled and hit the um, pylon and then burst into flames or maybe someone else set it on fire meanwhile what's everyone else back, back at the uh, back at the uh, shuttle doing we so really should have jazz. gotten paid in advance <laughs> so jazz you know tried to apply first aid to the exec who I guess is um, obviously dead so then jazz will just Try to assist the doc uh, with whatever he's trying to do to help um, the journalists and the grunge. Well, nothing. All of nothing. Them? Yeah, they're all they're, they're dead. All dead. All dead. You want to use a stasis feel on the chick? Dead. And now she's gone past there. And so two frag grenades. Two fink frag grenades at point blank range. Well, Jazz will just uh, look at the customs officers and say, huh, "Someday." Eh? Well, they, they very shakily come out from behind the ramp. Um, there are, you can see, there are cars, there are ground vehicles coming from this, this direction um, uh, and speeding towards you. Um, they appear to be both ambulances and security vehicles. Um, um, I've got a question. Yeah? 
the medical skill um, perform autopsy. Now, yeah, what about I, obviously, we're not, we're not going to be doing like a full on autopsy, but is that something can can the doctor be able to do something relatively quickly on the execs to see if they were hopped up on some kind of drugs or anything like that? Well, that would require a toxicology report, which is a, which is a bit more in depth. The doc could certainly, okay. or any medico, any any medico could quickly go over them. Right, well, jazz will do very that. quickly go over them, but not in detail. So, if you want to do it, I'll give you the search roles, and I'll I will apply a penalty to that search role because of the uh, nature of the, you know, there's blood everywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's it's not a proper autopsy area. Yeah, you know, whatever. So I'll give you the role, but 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 there'll be some penalties to apply. Yeah, jazz is not going to get very far. This jazz is not very good. Um, actually, you do spot a scar at the base of the neck of both of the executives, as though there's some kind of implant, perhaps. Or is it a uh, it, star it could have been. No, it's not. A, no, it's not. A, it's not that type. No, no. It, it, it's like the. It, it, yeah, well, it's a, it's a it's a scar in the car in the, in the carapace at the back of the head, at the base of the neck. Okay. You've seen that scar somewhere else. else, but you're not sure where. I'll, I'll be sure to point it out to everyone else. Do the. Uh, just add it in. Oh, no, go on, go on, go on. Do the Vrusk, like the technicians and custom officers, do they have a scar like that? Well, yeah, that means you would have to examine them. Yeah, I can look from a distance. I got Magna Gog. <laughs> uh, you can. Yeah, yeah, look, I don't mind if you want to give me, if you, if you give me a search run. Uh, no, they don't. Not that you can see anyway. Um, Jazz will, you know, he'll holster all his weapons and, and then, uh, make sure that. Well, by this, obviously, by this, obviously, by this time, the the vehicles, emergency vehicles, have all arrived. The security yeah. guards have come, uh, have popped their doors. Freeze! Don't move! Drop your weapons! <laughs> Fully cooperating. We're we're not looking for a fight. Get down on your knees. Defending ourselves. I don't have Cross these. Your ankles. Cross your ankles. Lace your fingers on top of your head. I don't have a head either. Yeah, well, um, you've got, you know, yeah. you know, don't mess with these guys. They're trigger happy. <laughs> Jazz looks over at Babu and uh, and Volk and says, uh, "Yeah, it's going to take you like what, ten minutes to grow out fingers and then lace them." No, you, you would have had to have fingers to use. The yeah, we have fingers use. already, but, you know, if you want a head, that's going to take a while. <laughs> All right, put it on top of the top of your body then. I don't care. Just somewhere where we can see them and lace them. Anyway, now, uh, uh, by the way, um, by the way, uh, uh, you, are, you are all complying, I take it? Yeah. Yes. Yep. yes. Okay. Um, now, Cerise. Um... Oh, these guys all have ripped uniforms on too, by the way. Okay. Um, that goes for both groups. Um, okay. Um, so you you park, you stop the bike. You get off the bike. Uh, if they want me to. Get off the bike, please. Sure. Put your hands on your put your hands on your heads and please kneel. Yeah, I comply. Okay. I just um, tell them that. Go on. Tell them what. That's the car that sniped at people at the landing pad. So, they seem to ignore you when you say that. Um, they, uh, while one covers you, uh, the other one puts some plastic cuffs on you um, and then uh, leads, you, leads you off. Pretty much the same happens with everybody else. Um, you're, you're put in plastic restrainers um and march or or in the case of in, in in fact for all of you you're put into ground cars and driven to um towards the admin building uh with your hands cuffed in a number of different cars obviously meanwhile the medics uh are checking out the the wounded 
uh, of which there are none now. Um, and Doc on this Doc gives a full report to the the uh, the, the medics, the, the ambulance medics that, that that show up. So oh, they didn't um, cuff Doc. Oh, they cuffed him after they got the information out of him. Ah. All right. Um, the uh, the two technicians are not cuffed. Uh, but they are bundled into a car and added to the convoy, and the three, the three uh, uh, um, customs official, uh, customs brusque officials, are also bundled into a car, but not cuffed and and driven uh, towards buildings, you know, big two basically. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, listen, guys, that's actually a good place to leave it. We've been going for four hours. Is that, everyone okay with that? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to play those credits, please, Ryan? And um, we'll see everyone in two weeks' time. Yep. Well, that's it for this session. We hope you've enjoyed the game as much as we did. We'd like to thank Smiteworks, Sirenscape, and Twitch. And, of course, all the fantastic people involved with the Star Frontiers RPG over the years. I'm Dulux Oz. And on behalf of the entire gaming group, we'd like to say thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Until then, may your God go with you.